Testing, testing, one, two, three. Sound check, sound check. I'm just hoping this music doesn't get copyright strike. It shouldn't, because I normally put this on my streams. So I think we should be all right. James Milne is the artist of Doomsday Kingdom. <laughs> this is the voice you will hear and soon you will see my face. This is 80s synthwave retro music. Yes, this is God. All sinners shall be punished. We're gonna, I'm gonna be treating you. We're gonna be showing the first page live. <laughs> I'm doing a live drawing, which it could fail. I've got to do some tweaks on the issue three cover, uh, just some different colors. And then the signature series image, I need to tweak some colors. And then I'm gonna be drawing page one, some of page one for you of issue three. It's not ge it's it's a general Q and A. <laughs> Issue three, I've literally just started doing the interiors today. switch the scene in one minute. stream stretch in
in an hour or maybe less hopefully ronnie will be coming on too because this is basically going to be a test stream for when we do dual stream in the future there's no sex toys <laughs> unless you count the rider figure as one Lucy Goosey. The chat, the answers to the chat might be delayed because I'm not connected to Money's YouTube. I've just got the live chat that you all see, so I've got slow mode. So bear with me if I don't answer any questions in a good enough time. Thank you, Flashbang. This uh, this is probably going to fail this stream. All right, prepare to be disappointed. The stream starts now. I've already missed the question. Wait a minute. Oh my god. Comic. Oh. Yay. Hello. I need to stop listening to myself. I know that my sound's pretty decent. If the music volume needs turning down even more, let me know. Because to me, it's going to be quiet because I can just turn my headphones down. And I can't hear a thing. Actually, no. What the hell's happened? Oh my god, we've got technical difficulties already. Has the music stopped? What the hell? I can't hear anything in my headphones anymore. I cannot stream in silence. <laughs> Give me a minute. I knew there'd be something wrong. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This mask is coming off in five minutes as well because it's itchy as hell. Oh, I figured it out. The reason why I wasn't hearing anything is because I didn't have the music playing outside of the intro. So, <laughs> who the fuck is that guy? My name is James Milne. I am the artist of Doomsday Kingdom. If you didn't know this, then uh, I don't know what I can say. I've been on this channel many times. If people follow the comic, then they know I'm here. This is not a runny stream. This is... A James stream. Hopefully we'll do these uh, once a week on days that Ronnie doesn't upload. Ronnie is going to try and come in later on. Um, I've got him set up so that we can go on Skype so you'll be able to see his video. And we're just going to crack in. So I don't know how insane this is going to be because I've never streamed to many, many people before. I only stream on my Facebook, which is like a few people I know. Um, so the first thing I gotta do is just change some colours. This could be really boring stuff to you, but it's stuff that needs to be done. To speed up the full colouring process. And I'm gonna take this mask off. Wait a minute. Yeah, that um that Game of Thrones picture was at my comic convention in Manchester last year. And the photos that it gave me, I hated. Because uh, they were just like boring, you know, just like the standard picture. By trade, I am a photographer, so I decided to retouch uh, the image to what you see now on that thumbnail. So it looks more like a Game of Thrones picture than what it is when they actually take it, because it's like so brightly lit in the convention hall. So yeah, this stuff might be tedious, but this is a stream just to get to know some more people and for people to ask questions not every question I'll be able to answer because obviously I can't give stuff away and things like release dates I don't know yet the um obviously we plan to get the second issue and the third issue physically out together which means the digital will be out as well pretty much on the same day that we open pre-orders and um, the second issue is available now online um, that's all I can say, really, because we still need to, like, 
the thing is when we do uh when we do the physical releases like the pre-orders we do have to set time aside because we need to focus like solely on getting the, the comics out to everyone so we don't want to be doing things at the same time where we end up having problems like shipping orders out that's the only reason why it's delayed more because it's like we have to get all the packaging make sure all the postage is ready to go and since we have a lot more people buying the comic than we realized you know it's gonna it's, it's gonna take us time to get used to it unless we can afford to pay a company who specializes in specializes in distribution to send out uh, the comics for us which yeah, we're not at that goal yet because that is very very expensive so what i need to do this stage that you see now is called uh, the color flats so this just lets me select different parts of the image and then i can just work solely on that so like when i want to color something like when i want to shade stuff in I can just affect that one area. The problem is this this process takes so freaking long. So I decided to just pay uh, someone to do it for me. Who I've got a great assistant, and his name is James as well, which is really strange because I went through a lot of flatters, um, which you can find online. Like you pay him like five dollars per page or whatever, and then the next day you get you get this basically. So you just put your your cover art over the top of it. And then I can just color it in or paint it if I wanted to. So I'm going to get an example of one of the pages from issue two. So I can double check the colors I used. Because uh, I obviously want them to be the same color. I can't remember off the top of my head what color they're going to be. By picking colors here, I need to actually sample it from another one. Because otherwise they won't look the same like when you're looking at them side by side. I don't know how effective I'm going to be really answering questions while I'm also trying to concentrate on drawing. This is why I was hoping Ronnie would be in straight away. Because he'll be able to answer some questions and at least if there's a question that's specific to me he can go, what do you think about this? But yeah, the I'll just catch up with anything that you've said first. Uh, I'm just scrolling back up. So... Hello, this is Walter White. I have taken the Iron Throne. Uh, welcome to the Dark Side. Welcome to the Dark Side. Says hello. Great to meet you. Great to meet all of you lot. Uh, your artwork is amazing. Oh, oh, thank you. I hate my artwork. <laughs> I look like Gordon Ramsay, or Tristan looks like Gordon Ramsay. Bill McLeish. As well, make sure you do put Q and A in caps so I can see it. You know, it's a standard affair on this place. And you have said. What do you think of the character art comic covers of The Walking Dead? Do you mean the the painted ones, like the variant covers? Because I only really liked the Carl one. That's the one that I recently saw. Um, I know there's other characters, but I'm not actually specifically looked at them, but it's, it's pretty cool. And if you're talking about the new character art for the new story, I also like them as well. Like, I'm kind of... A little bit of myth that they've started to incorporate having their their army with actual armor because all of our characters in the future um when the zombies have like taken over like all the different factions have their own unique armors as well so it's kind of a bit taking the wind out of our sails somewhat jean francois rio bergeron i hope this new kind of stream from map will stay hopefully it depends how this one goes and it's really to test if my internet can handle streaming Skype video as well, which it should because it's only low quality anyway. Uh, Brother Arturius, hello everyone, this is the first Maker Path Presents live stream I've been in. Well, that's cool. Hello, sister. Can't wait for the third issue. The second one made me tear up a little. Well, it made me cry when I was drawing it because I was told one thing and I ended up drawing another. Which, if you've read it, then you'll know what. Specifically as well, like, regarding spoilers, this is an issue three stream. I mean, I don't think the title really tells you what you're going to be seeing in this stream, but spoilers ahead if you haven't read uh, the previous issue. Because this page that I'm going to be showing you is a direct continuation from 
The end of issue two. Wisdom for this is real life. Oh my god, Maker Path presents is in it. And I've somehow skipped questions. I know even. Uh it's strange not seeing him on his face above the map. He might be in it. He might be. Sammy Schultz says, I love Doomsday Kingdom. Robin, how long does a page like that take to finish? Sometimes if I'm doing digital, which some of the pages in the comic are purely digital, like this one originally was, uh, it speeds up the time taken because it's quicker just to like fill in large areas, you know, with a color. I don't like that he's getting blackface right now. I'm not trying to be racist. But I'm just showing you an example. Whereas like if I'm doing it on paper, obviously I have to manually do it. Um, the average page takes 12 to 16 hours. Um, I hope that answers the question. That's a very broad answer. Some pages will take longer. If there's like a load of buildings, um, which I can show the cover for issue, for issue three as well. This one needs tweaking a lot because the colors are not the same. Um, like stuff like doing these buildings, like I have to like work on a big piece of paper so I can get some of the details in. Um, this one took me a little bit longer because I was more focused on the characters. I don't know why he's put green here when it's supposed to be the the pavement or a road. Um, yeah, anything with anything that has perspective in it, where you have to. Oh my god, why are the pens that side up? Where you have to like do these perspective grids, like make sure they're accurate. Like this building, like the lines go there. So I need to like find the horizon, which was roughly here. And then you have to like spend time like doing all this shit, like mapping out all the freaking lines. And that takes a long time. Digital is a little bit easier because you can just do one line and copy and paste it. Uh, but this one, like I was doing it on paper on my actual drawing table. So it takes longer to do it because I have to make sure that I don't slide the pen. Like when I'm doing a line on a ruler, like sometimes the ink will like pour out a little bit too fast or I'll just like shake the ruler because like I'm gripping onto it. Um, so that's why I like to do all that kind of stuff digital because it's, I can never mess up the lines. Well, that's an example of what I have to do for the pages. Can't wait for issue three to come out. You guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ronnie has said, yeah, Julia is ill. Which is why Ronnie might not be in. Uh, who else? Bravato is the artwork is really awesome. You look skinny, Ronnie. <laughs> and if you haven't noticed, I'm going to be streaming for a couple of hours. Uh, I am from Grimsby originally, but I live in Manchester. Uh, Doomsday Kingdom Phantom Community, which I recommend everybody follow because sometimes I will do streams there. My favourite page that I've drawn is always the latest ones, so like in specific, this one is my favorite one. Uh, serious question, what's my favorite biscuit? I eat bourbon biscuits a lot, which is a pretend chocolate biscuit. It wants to be chocolate, but it's not quite chocolate. Uh, it's made with Barnville chocolate, which is a dark chocolate. Um, but I'm not averse to the chocolate hobnob as well, which I don't know if you have them in America, they're just oat biscuits with a thick layer of chocolate. Um, I'll answer another question in a second. If anyone's never seen, I did spend a lot of time making a actual figure of the rider, which you may have seen if you follow me on Instagram. I handmade this and painted it. <laughs> it goes in a feeding post diorama, if you've seen the, the first issue cover. It replicates that. I just want to point out because it's my little mascot. He has to be there to give me confidence in the stream. <laughs> You're getting a headache just looking at my process. That takes dedication. Well, thank you. So the question... Oh, well, you're probably not going to like me, Wisdom, because I don't support any football team. I used to... Fan I used to... Uh, what's the word? Support Manchester United. 
And I've even met Ryan Giggs, because when I was a chef, um, Rio Ferdinand was one of the investors in the restaurant. And so, on occasion, the Manchester United football people will come for dinner and I'd cook for them. Um, Victoria Beckham came one time with a party of like 20 people. That's my little claim to fame, but that was about six years ago, and I've not really kept up with football since. <coughs> uh, I love Slayer. Well, I say love, I do like Slayer. Rain and Blood is obviously uh, some kind of... Had some kind of influence on this one. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, let me just try and get some work done. It's going to be hard for me to do this. <laughs> Drawing and talking at the same time. Uh, I've missed a question. Uh, do I watch The Walking Dead? And if so, who is your fave character as well as your fave season? My favourite season is... Kind of the first one. Um, I don't watch it now. I've stopped watching it for some reason. You can hate me all you want. Um, I just lost interest in in watching everything in general. Like, there's only a select few things that I'll watch purely because I'm too busy, like, trying to create stuff myself. Um, if I could just sit back and watch TV shows all the time, like, I'm never going to get anything done. So I just... It's, like, my enjoyment now just comes from making a comic. I tend not to waste time watching stuff. I'll listen to things while I'm drawing, like, music or podcasts or whatever. Sometimes I'll have videos in the background, but I won't. If I'm going to watch a video, I like to make sure that I've got, you know, the focus so I can enjoy it properly. My fave character? Oh, God. I don't know. I really hated Merle, but then he re when he redeemed himself, I was like, I love him, and then he got fucking killed. <laughs> so I was like, so I'd say Merle, um, and the early season Daryl's. But yeah, like season one, like I really love just the quiet atmosphere before he gets into the sea. Uh, what's the next question? Where would I set up my camp in the zombie apocalypse? I'm not even prepared for that. If I was like Post Malone, I'd be making an underground bunker in the woods somewhere. Uh, what's my background? You were a chef before drawing like a beast. Um, very briefly, if you go on the Doomsday Kingdom website, there is an about section for me and Ronnie. It's a little autobiography. Um, and I started off as a chef. That's what I learned when I was in school. I went to a catering college. And then... Um, I was in a Chinese restaurant when I was like 15 and then I went to college when I was 16 and then I did a four year course and I finished it in three years which then by the the chefs that run the place like they put my name in because um, they have agents working with the people who graduate from the college to go into a restaurant um, and one of the job vacancies was that they had this Japanese restaurant in Manchester and essentially they wanted me to work there like I was 19 uh, so I was like the youngest chef when I got there and I was working with like top of the line chefs from, from the best Japanese places in London um, specifically ones called Nozomi and Zuma um, and they got an executive head chef from there some sushi chefs and then I did Japanese food for like two years. So everything I learned in college was a waste of time. Uh, because <laughs> I learned like French infusion, like English food. But I was doing Japanese food. So it's literally I had to like learn how to cook again, essentially. I mean, the basics of cooking stayed there. Like in my, in my mind and stuff. Uh, but just applying it to uh, Japanese cuisine. And then... For some reason, I became a photographer um, because I bought a camera like a year into working there. Because of the the top chefs that I was working with, I wanted to document them. But by the time I got the camera, like most of the good chefs had left. The upside being, 
that I got promoted every time someone left. <laughs> so in um, in about three weeks, I was this was when I was twenty. Um, I was like a commie chef, which is just like one step up above a pot wash. And then I was the second chef, so I was literally like second in command of running the place. Which I was already good at doing that because that was why I got picked in the first place. Uh, because again, when you're in the catering college, like each year it gets harder and harder and you get promoted in a way you have to learn how to take control of a kitchen and run a kitchen. So that's what I did. And hopefully that answers that question. So what I'm doing here for those who are interested, is just sampling the colour from Tristan in this photo, which is the same, the, the right colours, um, and then I'm just tweaking what the flatter gave me. It's not important for a flatter to give you the exact colours, um, because the only thing that's important is just to make sure every colour is different, so it's easy for me to select different sections of a building. Or So like these are supposed to be windows, so they're going to get changed colour. Um, and as long as the value is different, I won't ever select the same thing. So the red's a bit dark. So literally like with a magic wand, I can just hit one portion of red and then I can just tweak it all in one go. So I'm just gonna line that up a little bit. He put the colors right for Katie, but I don't know why he didn't do Tristan because I gave him a reference so that you could just pick the colours for me now that we've been working together for so long um, like even his skin tone is not right so we're just changing that and filling it with the right colour and this will be the boring section of the stream until I start getting into drawing I'm just trying to get my nerves a little bit settled because I'm not used to streaming to many people um, I do like Megadeth, but I haven't listened to them for years. Um, I always bought them on vinyl because I recently got a vinyl player. Uh, love you, James. Good to see you live streaming. Thank you, Spin. Uh, hey, James. Great to finally see you. Catch a live stream. Can't wait. Uh, Manchester United is not bad as long as I don't support Tottenham or Chelsea. No, I don't. Um, Paul Lee Dean. Sorry I am late, but what is your artistic influence? Any contemporary artist? I don't know, Picasso? <laughs> of course, one of my main modern influences is Charlie Adlard, but it's not just Charlie Adlard who I'm inspired by. More recently, I'm more inspired by Sean Phillips, which I was following at the same time as I came across Charlie Adlard, um, slightly before The Walking Dead, because I didn't even know The Walking Dead was a thing until I saw the show. Um, but Charlie Adlard did X-Files, which I was a really big David Duchovny fan, so looking at the X-Files comics and his artwork uh, was pretty cool. He also did Dread as well, which is a staple for the UK comic scene. Like, Judge Dread is like one of the best things we've produced. Um, American modern artists, apart from Sean Phillips and Charlie Adlard, is... Oh, what's the name? Michael Lark. His art style is very similar to what I'm doing, especially in issue two, because like my artwork's improved. Um, so if you look up Michael Lark, he's done a lot of stuff on Daredevil. He's got an image comic that's finished now called Lazarus, which in the film version, Michelle Rodriguez is apparently supposed to be playing it, but I don't know if they're still planning to make that because this was years ago. Um, but they're the main three that I, that I look up to. Do you remember what the first thing you have ever drawn is? Funny you should mention that because today on Facebook, like that Facebook memories thing came up and it was a really horrible manga drawing of myself, which I did, um, I, did on, I did it in pencil uh, and I was testing out digital for the first time. This was six years ago. I haven't got time to get the picture in because it's going to screw up all my settings, but um, yeah, I redrew over it. Um, in Illustrator with a mouse um, and that's how I started to learn like digital not the best way to learn how to draw <laughs> especially when doing digital like you need to have a stylus and a 
a tablet like this is a Cintiq so I can see the screen so I'm drawing directly on it like I was drawing on paper which is cool uh, you miss Merle rest in peace Merle Flashbang Marson, one day I'll have enough money to spare to help support James when he with a comic. We appreciate the word of mouth as well, like don't underestimate that. If you go to your comic book shop and say, pick up Doomsday Kingdom, and they're like, what the hell's Doomsday Kingdom? Show them what Doomsday Kingdom is, and then direct them to the website. Like, we need to set up something as well, uh, behind the scenes to like, sell the comics in more comic shops. I mean, the official way is that you have to get diamond distribution and that normally comes with having a publisher but since we're self-publishing, like we need all the help we can get. Some shops like we're friends with as in my local shop and run is like, they'll gladly take some comics but it's not getting it outside of our area which is what we want. Um, thanks Doomsday Kingdom fan community, John. I do sell the original artwork. There's a, some. There's only a couple left now. Doomsday Kingdom is not my first comic. Um, I've done some mini comics and I'm working on my own. Uh, but in a way you can say Doomsday Kingdom is my first major comic because I'm going to be doing this for however long. So, uh, yes. Uh, I'm loving seeing you showing us the artwork so creative. I can't wait to... Sh if, if you let me know... Um, if you want to see issue three, first page, I've only done the sketches, um, because right now I do need to just finish doing these two pieces, uh, not fully. I just need to change the the basic colors. Since, so who's asking now? Dave. I'm not gonna say your second name. Since you can draw like a badass, you think you could tattoo just as well? No, I can't handle the shake of a tattoo gun like I've picked up one because my one of the chefs that I worked with he's a tattoo artist and he's the one who's done all of my tattoos for basically free like I paid for this Grim Reaper uh, from a different artist and then all of these ones I've literally paid like £100 for all of them um, so but yeah with tattoo like even in general like drawing I have severe problems with my whole entire body my body is rejecting the fact that i'm trying to live um so long story short like all of my bones are like really stiff so i have like a bit of shake because i have to really focus on holding the pen so i don't know what i'd be like with a tattoo gun i'd probably start like tattooing and then just like stab somebody you know and then i'd never tattoo again i'm from grimsby united kingdom i live in manchester now uh, don't be nervous. Thank you. The issue two and three are coming out when they come out. I'm pretty much trying to draw as fast as I can now because I've got a... Because we want it to release now. Um, so I'll say a safe bet is at least the end of March now. Um, I was toying with the idea of asking to hold off and get an issue ahead, which I may try and get us to do later on um just so that i can have an issue done we can release an issue and then i'll have one you know ready to go while i draw the next one so that you're not waiting as much but it's not like the first issue where we had to delay it for a whole year um because like i said we just had to find our footing um with shipping you know accounting for all the money or whatever you know it's a lot of a lot of things to like think about um, I do have my own YouTube, it's Observant Games, sometimes I put stuff on there, but I've not really put too much stuff on there now, just because I'm always working on a comic and I can't always show it. Uh, who else is seeing? This is interesting to watch you work. Uh, thank you Brandy for stopping. Uh, I think Trev clicked the dislike button. I don't get this, there's no beef with Trev's Chan and Ronnie. I even asked this question because I was really confused. Um, well, yeah, Trev's all right. Uh, Spin Spin said, I might have missed uh, it, but can you explain how blank variants work? Can we have anything we want drawn on them by you? Yeah, when we do the slots, like we did when we did the first pre-order, um, we 
did five because I can only like draw five things in between comment pages. So when they go up, um, you can have anything you want drawn on them basically. The blanks that are on the website now, they are just the blanks on their own because the whole reason in it for blanks is that you take them to a convention and you get like an artist that you like. That's not me uh, to draw on it. Um, so like I got the Charlie Adlard one. I had Charlie Adlard draw on mine. One sec. his fist over the entire planet and then we heard the rumor oh my god that the last <laughs> was the cure. so yeah the plague, <laughs> so this is the whole point of him you get the blank and you take it to an artist that you like Why? and then get him to draw something and Charlie Adlard did our rider for us <laughs> he's such a cool guy I've met him so many times now um, I'm doing all right Tim I apologize for blowing out the microphone. Well, let's try and get some work done. Uh, all three aren't out yet. We're, I'm in the process of doing it. I'll give you a really quick glimpse now. Oh wait, let me just change the, change the thing. I'm gonna show you a little process of the comic as well. Okay. So there were people asking me before like what the process is of making a comic and it all starts with Ronnie giving me a script and so this is the script for issue three page one so I specifically asked Ronnie to like put all the information I'll need because obviously I need to know what I'm doing so the cover like the cover idea is like I don't even know what this wording is in the script because we talk on Facebook first um, so I've already done the cover by the time Ronnie's put this in. It's just for us to know. This is definitely what the cover was supposed to be. Um, so it's sad Tristan and scared Katie holding onto his arm, standing bloody rainfall with the city behind him, which is what you saw on this one. Like the the one change from that description is that she's not. She might be scared, but I didn't draw her being scared. I just drew her supporting Tristan, but Tristan's obviously angry if you've seen the second issue. Um, there is there is going to be rain on here. I did two versions. I did the rain in black just because... Um, I did the rain in black on the actual paper, but I scanned it before I added the rain because it would screw up with the colorist doing the, the flats. So what it actually will look like once it's got uh, the red in it, it will actually look like it's rain. There we go. Like it will look like that, but with blood. Um, so yeah, I hope that's interesting. <laughs> so like, I'd be annoyed anyway being in, in rain in general without a coat, but Tristan is specifically angry because of what happened in the second issue. Um, but yeah, like Ronnie will just say, oh, I just want, because this one, he didn't know how to specifically tell me, like he couldn't write it down in some words, like what he wanted me to draw. He just said, uh, I want Tristan and Katie, it's rain and blood and the city's behind them. So this area is the, general town square of Wilkes Bear or Wilkes Bar, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, this little corner of a building here is called Dino's in the comic. It's the bar and restaurant that Katie and Tristan work at. In real life it's called Rodano's. Um, so literally this was a bit easier to draw because it was a case of going onto Google looking at some images and then recreating it. I didn't trace a photograph or anything like that. I did this purely from looking at a photograph of the area and then doing this all by hand. Um, so you can see like it looks a lot more like there's actual rain happening. Um, but yeah. So that's the cover. And 
then we'll go back onto the script. The variant cover has anyone seen? Has everyone seen that? We've showed that in a video previous. Um, it's got Katie in the bath a bit naked. Uh, I can try and get that out. And I mean the cover. Enough. No, I'm not talking about something else. Oh my god, it's not even showing the screen, is it? I've got to remember to keep switching. So this is the variant cover. This is a online exclusive. Like this will be up for pre-order when we do the pre-orders. Uh, this one won't be available in the shops unless I cover up the nipples because some people are very sketchy about seeing nipples <laughs> in real life on a cover in a comic shop. Especially when there's like kids running around. Um, so yeah, that's basically what the script bit is. So if I open it up, it'll be easier for me. Um, the inside cover is Tristan and Katie prepare to fight creeps in the bar. This is what the signature series image is, which is a different image every issue or for the issues that we plan to do because I don't know if we're doing a signature series for every issue. Um, but it's this shot. And I have free reign to pretty much do whatever I want for these signature series. So is the guys put normal colored hands, but these are zombie hands. Um, in the in the actual second issue, there is no zombies apart from one. Um, but I just I like to be able to do like a cool image um, each time. And if you watch the third uh, issue, the creep from issue one, uh, the one with his eye. He has like one eye and his arms nearly coming off and his legs like really screwed up. Um, I'm doing a painting of that to match the rider one from issue one. Um, so yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting. And then we move on. So inside back cover, which is just our social pages. And then this is a new thing with the creeps uh, panorama that I did with the last of us and the walking dead and doomsday kingdom. That's the current back issue, the back cover for the variant covers. Um, and it's going to be the cover for issue two, but issue three has changed it. It says a new, it says new, a bigger story to tell promo. So I don't know if I've got, if I've got to draw something else or we're just going to reuse an, ish, an image and Ronnie's just going to put the text on it. But the synopsis for this issue, spoilers ahead, of course we are doing issue three stuff. So spoilers are pretty much given. You can read it there. Tristan reels from a tragic and sudden loss while traveling to meet his sister through a city that's falling into madness. And we hinted at the first signs of our outbreak in uh, issue two. So if you haven't picked up issue two, get it now. <laughs> like it's going to be a little while before we get the physical. So show your support and help us with a digital purchase. So now we're going to get into what the page the scripts for the pages are Ronnie first he will write down in a notepad in a notepad he loves he loves writing stuff on paper um you'd think he'd prefer doing stuff digital all the time but he just loves doing paper stuff so he'll write out like very loosely just so he knows for himself what he wants to do because there's no point committing to a full script description like this until he's going to send it to me because it could have changed um and then essentially he'll give me it. So this is the script for page one. So panel one is a borderless panel. We continue right where issue two left off, Tristan's point of view, and we see the intruder leaping midair angrily towards a spit and blood coming from his mouth. This person is infected. And our zombies are different to the walking dead. So all rules that you think we should be following if you're hardcore into the walking dead, please throw it out of your mind because we're not doing the same thing as the walking dead this is a stage one zombie um before becoming an official zombie so we can have bloodshot eyes and veins showing through his skin have fun with it this is what i did um and if you want me to show you the second page then i can uh the, the page from the second issue in question which is the last page um but then panel two is titan in view from inside the bathroom as tristan instinctively tries slamming the door on the intruder his blood-soaked fingers breaching the crack in the door and the intruder's wicked demented grin with chipped teeth and bloody drool. So that's pretty much 
Tristan's gone to like slam into the door and then he's gonna you're gonna see the creep the fingers of the creep coming through and it's just his mouth like arr, like proper growing so I can show you what that looks like in very loose crappy sketch form <laughs> and it looks a little something like this so these sketches won't make much sense to you but it's essentially this is the the bathroom door frame uh, the bathroom door is open towards us because we're look this is from Tristan's point of view so we're looking at what he's looking at and so the door's here but it's going to be in shadow uh, in the distance is the living room or kitchen table there's a window and then this is the creep he, he was stood here uh, because he was creeping up on Tristan in the second issue and because he's not officially a full-on zombie they're a lot more maneuverable and quick hence this guy is jumping um, and then the second panel which we've just seen is Tristan running against it now this pose I'm going to change because it's not right but you can essentially get the idea of what is going on you got the creep just with his gr just with his grin and then his hands are like poking through the door and Tristan's like holy shit and I'm hoping that Tristan I don't know yet what one is planned for the next page because uh, he's got the script written he just hasn't given me the final one uh, but this towel pole I really hope that he's gonna like use that as a weapon like pull it off and uh, hit it again hit it against the creep so very quickly let me catch up on some questions and for the person who just said I should totally make a full anime episode of Dooms of Kingdom well I am trying to do that 90 second one but it takes a hell of a lot of time so let me go back up okay is there any way we could see the five that you draw for other people? Like, just to see what they wanted, etc. Sure thing. So he's talking about what the commission examples are like. And I'm a big fan of these. Like, I get nervous drawing the comic in general because I don't want to make a crap comic. But then I put myself under a lot more pressure when I open myself up for commissions because these are custom images that people want. So it's like especially drawing on a comic, I can't screw it up. Um, so let me just see if I can find one. Just give me a second, people. Okay. So this is the late, one of the latest ones I did. Uh, this one is the this is the higher price one this is a uh, hundred and a hundred dollars I think was the option and it's essentially drawing on the front and the back most of the commissions like they're only for the front uh, because of time and it's a cheaper option um, so I can only do like one person to have it like a full full thing I don't know why I can't full screen it, but this is one example of what a commission looks like. Interesting to know if any of you have read the first issue, which I'm hoping most of you have. Um, we've got Ronnie, <laughs> and we've got the Rider, and we have this new thing, which until it, like if I ever color it, um, you're not really going to tell what it is, but it's a bone tomahawk. There's little teeth here, and then this is a bone that's been sharpened, and then it's just got a pattern painted onto it. Um, and then there's like some kind of tribal feathers or string or whatever. Um, this is actually going to be the signature weapon of the rider, which is cool. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully that explains something. Um, let me pull up the next one. The very last commission I finished a couple of weeks ago is this one. And if you are all horror fans, like hardcore ones, these signs all specifically have significance in different horror films. Uh, so Antonio Bay, uh, if I remember, it's the location of where the fog is set. Derry, which is it. Sinthaniania, or whatever you pronounce it, is The Walking Dead. And then look, represent... We've got Wilkes Bar or Wilkes Bear, however you pronounce it. Run his hometown and the town, the city, 
place in America. I don't know how America works. Uh, where Doomsday Kingdom takes place. Uh, so yeah, this is a front cover only, which most of the commission options are just for this. Um, I'm not going to bother going through the other ones, if that's okay with you, because I want to try and get something done tonight. Uh, but that's an example of what a commission looks like. Uh, yeah, like if you, Adam mentioned, if you go on my shop, which is uh, James Milne Art ticktail.com um, you can actually there's an option I put on there for a cheaper commission which is a small image and it's a portrait of you as a zombie uh, so I can show you real quick what that looked like this is just a sketch I did so you would just if you decide to buy it you just send me a picture of yourself like a front shot and a side shot. And I'll draw you as a zombie. Any other questions I've missed? <coughs> uh, if you email me a picture, how much will it cost to have you draw me? Like I say, if you go in the shop, it's 20 pound English money, um, so that would be about $30, uh, but because there's multiple, um, I can do it for $50, I think. Like, you, like you can email me or whatever. Uh, I think there's social links in this description as well, so you can just message me on there and then I can set something up, or you can just buy two of the zombify yourself which I can actually show you as well to be honest give me a second I didn't anticipate how little work I would actually do so this is my website uh, where my webcam is <laughs> currently <laughs> blocking it it's jamesmilnart.ticktail.com and you can buy the original pages from Doomsday Kingdom when I put them on sale. And these are what I have left. And if you go all the way down, the Zombify Yourself Portrait Commissions are here. So if there's multiple people, you can just buy two. Um, and I'll just do it on one bigger piece of paper because this is my standard size paper. Like, this would be the size, so I'd draw you and your daughter there. But for the portraits, like the single ones, it's this big. Uh, so it's half an A4 sheet. It's about six inches by four inches or something like that. So yeah, you just send me a picture of yourself and I can draw you as a zombie if you want. This is uh, Ben as a zombie. And then when I do have time, I will put up um, an option so you can get commission direct from here because these will be not on a co they, they these will be on actual comic paper. They won't be on a comic book, uh, which we sell through the website of Doomsday Kingdom. So hopefully that clears up some information. What else do we got? Ronnie is going to try and come in later. I not I'm not kept up with my messages. Um. I think he's going to put Julius to bed or whatever and then he'll come in. Or he might just be listening to me now. So if, in that case, hello Ronnie. <laughs> uh, thanks Ben, great stream. Uh, the whole Trev Chan beef was and continues to be started by trolls of both channels. Trev honestly had no idea there was beef and doesn't care. Yeah, Ronnie told me he does. He, there is no beef. I asked that question as well. Uh, great to see how it's done. Never really get to see behind the scenes of comics. Thank you. Uh, what else? Hats off to me. Thank you, Tim. You should keep at it. Uh, we've seen the variant. The cake covers awesome. Bloodbath. That's freaking cool to see what goes into using your imagination from reading the script. That's true talent. Oh god, you're gonna make me blush. Uh, any Walking Dead related stuff for the TV show, I'm not interested in because I don't watch it anymore, so... Sorry. <laughs> uh... 
I mean, you can talk about it yourself, but just don't ask me questions about it. Uh, oh my god, Ronnie loves Bone Tomahawk. Is there an actual Bone Tomahawk? Is there a Bone Tomahawk in the film? Bone Tomahawk. I just assumed that was the name of the old man. Uh, okay. What else? Sorry. Uh, after the rough sketch, do you get input from Ronnie? Yeah, like, like he'll... I think we've got to the point where we trust a lot we trust each other a lot more so when it comes to obviously doing stuff like this like in the script it said like he's leaping so it's hard to get it wrong um you know it's just the case of like unless there's something very specific that he wants to show like if there's something in the background then i have to make sure that i pick an angle so you can see what's in the background um but most cases like i decide everything else that's in it um i show him this first and then he'll say, yeah, I like it. Most of the time he just says he loves it, which is cool. And sometimes he doesn't say anything at all until I've colored it. And then I'm like, did he like it? Does he love it? I don't know. I've drawn it now though, so I can't go back. There was times in the first issue where he was uh, trying to get me to change something. And I was just like, it's too fucking late. Like we've done it. It's ready to go pretty much. But then we had that delay and I could have done the change, but I wanted to keep the mystery because the question was, for those who care, is that everyone in issue one has masks, so you don't know who anybody is. And he wanted me to take one off one specific person, which was the main guardian guy. Uh, the big dude in the army attire. And uh, he wanted to take the helmet off, but I'd already drawn the page, man, and it's a big freaking page, and he's got that page. Because he just loved how I drew the face of the guy. Um, so he wanted me to show it off in the comic but you know I like the fact that we can keep the mystery because we've got loads of issues to draw I don't want to just like show it who everybody is like straight away now, you love the t-shirt I'm wearing this is a custom one-off print that I did testing it this might be an official t-shirt down the line we are looking into doing merchandise soon hopefully when we do the third issue well when we release the second and third issue we can have something up um, merch wise uh, please do a live action comic video one day that would be epic this is what the map family's for if you follow Ronnie like most of you would be doing um, he does want to expand into making things like short films or online episodes the animation thing that I'm working on like if that goes down decent then we can probably pay someone to make like 10 minute episodes and do like a, a mini series something to have while you're waiting for a comic because um, we don't want to just do a comic like the comic is the main priority but we want to expand and reach as many people as possible and i'm a huge fan of animation so i'd love to do an animation but i just wouldn't have time to do it myself obviously because i'll be doing the comic um coming anew i do not write myself i am kind of writing because i write I have my own little mini comic that I'm doing, which I'm not showing yet. Um, but yeah, I'm just visually inclined, so I'll just like sketch out a sketch out a storyboard instead of doing a script. Um, I could just ask a writer to write because I have some other friends who are writers as well. Um, so yeah, so in the future, like I plan to release that, and that's just something I'm doing very sporadically. Uh, who else? Money finally got his bone tomahawk. <laughs> uh, right. Great job. Do you research pictures of Pennsylvania landscapes to see what the lay of the land is like? Yeah, of course. Um, Google Earth is the best tool. Especially when I'm on my iPad, because I've got a big iPad. So I just go on like virtual tours. Like, I never leave this house. I'm basically a prisoner in my own home doing this comic for you like you don't understand how much time I sacrifice if people want me to do something with them I'm like uh, got a comic <laughs> do you want to go on a date nope <laughs> I've got a comic like I am I'm trapped in this little box I cannot get out somebody help me uh, <laughs> I do have my own YouTube channel it's observant games 
which should be linked, I think. Um, it might be linked in this description, I don't know. Uh, who else? Uh, I'm going to bribe Ronnie to write me into DK, so you have to draw me. This is a thing that I am doing, like, those who I talk a lot to on Facebook, like, you can all add me on Facebook if you can find me. It's just James Milne. Um, you can add me on my personal Facebook, and if we get to talking a lot, then you might be in the comic. Like, the first issue we had Eddie. Um, I don't know if he's in the stream now. Um, he was the, the zombie shield zombie. Um, the second issue, I didn't draw anyone in particular in it, but in the next one... I'm possibly drawing John. Um, so yeah, like you can also you can if you want you can like send me pictures as well, and I may put you in a, a pre as in a I may put you as a pre zombie or as a zombie. Like it depends if it fits. I don't want to just like keep drawing everybody that we know because <laughs> the comic's gonna get real. It's gonna cross that line of being too real life and not a comic book. Because again, when I'm drawing the people in the thing, I have to just, I imagine what the characters look like. Um, unless it's a specific thing that I've got to look at. Like, if I've got to draw you in it, then obviously you're going to look like you in the comic. But for the most part, everything just comes from my head. I just make it up what people look like. Uh, who else? What else do I draw besides Doomsday Kingdom? Let me get a picture. Uh, I draw some really weird shit. There was this film I watched uh, a couple of years ago, and it's literally called Doggy Poo. And it's a short claymation animation of a little poo. And I don't even remember the rest of the plot, but it's it's entertaining. It's so fucking weird. Uh, but yeah, like I like drawing this like animated style. Um, but most of the time I draw like I just draw things that I like. But it's mainly Doomsday Kingdom. Uh, I, I'm drawing something now uh, for myself uh, for a print, and it's from the game Neo Automata. Give an example. So yeah, like it's a very clean anime style, which I like as well. And it's a little bit quicker for me to draw stuff like this, so hopefully that answers that question. Uh, I'd love to see a plain black t-shirt with a Doomsday Kingdom. Yeah, that's going to be simple for us to do. A Doomsday Kingdom logo t-shirt. Uh, who else we got? I was wanting to know if James has his own YouTube platform because there's a cool setup. I have to pull out all the stops to get this <laughs> to get this in motion. Uh, what artwork have you created? Are you most proud of? Do you have a favorite subject to draw? It's a very cliche answer for an artist to say. My favorite piece of artwork is the last piece I've drawn because hopefully you just improve every time you do something. Um, but obviously from the first issue of Doomsday Kingdom, like my favorite thing was drawing the rider, like, I just love that design. Um, it's so freaking cool. Uh, a subject to draw, like, I, I just, I like drawing anything, like, really. If the image turns out cool, then that's all that matters. But again, horror, because <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Uh, what is my kitty cat's name? Have my cats tried to jump in the stream? I've got, um two cats. One's called Toothless and the other is Harley Quinn. I don't know if you can see him. Toothy! What can you see? What was that? You got fans. He just loves sleeping next to me all the time. Oh my god. Uh... How did you and Ronnie get together to bring Doomsday Kingdom to life? I uh, was a fan of his YouTube. Um, I can't remember how I came across his channel, but being a naive artist or aspiring artist, because again, it's not my main job. Um, 
was to just give him something um, so I can show you what I gave him. This was back when he was doing it as a novel. Uh, so the first thing I sent him was a potential cover which has elements that ended up in the comic because we, we the house the, the abandoned house and the the car and stuff was like a main feature of the story let me just try and find it well the very first thing I actually did send him was this Facebook banner because his Facebook page had like nothing there was no images really on it um, so I did that but the main thing that I got in touch with if you read the first issue at the end of the issue there's a feed and post section and I briefly talk about how I met Ronnie um, but I did this hardcover slip cover basically um, and it looks like this so the front of the cover is there this bit is the flap that folds inside then you got the back so you can got a text box and then a box of something else Ronnie's name would be there I don't even think I knew what his name was was it I think I just knew him as Maker Path Presents and then this is the back slip uh, cover but as you can see like we have like the house uh, this is a more destroyed version of the house uh, the abandoned car and then we just have this like shot and this is a really crap image um, but we have the prisoner being towed on the horse and I didn't know what any of these characters look like at all um, again this was just the rough so that you could see what a cover would look like um, I liked it I, I still like it I like the angle and then he was interested to see more things so I did some images like a comic page uh, based off of the script excerpts that he showed on Facebook um, so again this is like the house like super destroyed and you got the rider pulling against him you got the car and I was still learning drawing really at, at this point because the stuff that I was drawing was only like single character illustration type of things this was the first time doing like sequential um, I really liked this shot so I kept it in the actual finished comic as well I just redrew it being pulled by the horse and then the rider again I didn't know what the rider looked like I just made up the outfit but his arms are way too short and he looks like a box <laughs> um, but yeah that's essentially that and then it was like oh I want to see more so then again based off just his words so he didn't send me a script or anything I did um a thumbnail for the second and third page uh, so this is like the first reveal shot of the Phenom post and in the distance you can see the house which in the actual comic the Phenom post is a lot farther away further away um, and then you have the rider dismounting his horse going to wrap the chain around and then this I thought was a really cool shot which I wish I did but he pulls out his sword and in the reflection is the prisoner which is a fucking cool shot but I haven't had a chance I've not been able to use that um, yeah like he, and then he picks up the prisoner and he leads him to the feeding post so yeah I mean I love these thumbnails like if I ever get time I might just draw this as like a finished thing and just say this was Doomsday Kingdom before I was even on the project because when I got in touch with him the only reason I got in touch with him was just to ask if I could like help out with the cover, uh, the comic covers but even at that time it wasn't even a comic it was just a book um, so that was what when was that April 2015 was when I did that um, and again it was still a novel so we were speaking online for about a year and then he told me that the artist that he had had bailed basically he was just asking for money so you know that's how i got involved with it because instead of me just doing the covers i ended up doing the entire thing and then the first official piece of artwork i did for the comic was the issue two cover i think uh 
the, the fireworks and fevers one. So yeah, very interesting. <laughs> I was actually supposed to be doing this image. This was, uh, when was this? This was April 2016. I, I wanted to do them as a zombie. <laughs> so if again, if you want a commission of yourself as a zombie, just go on my shop and pick the option. And then if there's multiple character, if there's multiple people on it, not characters, uh, just buy two and then I can put it on one page. <laughs> Let me have a look. Okay. Let me have a look if there's any more questions. Is this interesting? Like I was supposed to be drawing, but I think it'd be better if I draw off stream <laughs> unless Ronnie comes in and he can take over some of the questions I didn't realize how many questions I'd actually get um, so I've answered I, I met Ronnie because I was a fan uh, the geek online I used you as an artist study in GCSE last year and did studies of Tristan and Ryder art and it got me a B grade well that's great and I don't mean to sound that I Unenthusiastic, I do <laughs> really think that's awesome. I think you actually, I'm sure somebody mentioned to me that they were using the comic artwork as something for their school project. It might have been another person. Uh, my main job is a photographer, um, which I can show. And it's a job I love to do. Uh, let me see if I can find. I literally just made a new book for work. Um, just a week ago. So yeah, this is a quick example. Should be alright showing this. So I'm a fashion photographer. That's that's what my job is. <laughs> it's very glamorous. I have my own studio there as well, so. I get to do a lot of cool shit. And this is a general area around my place of, of work, basically. It's very cool. Yeah, it's just it's awesome fashion photography. <laughs> I've been doing that for five years, just over five years now. Uh, okay. Did I go to school for art? No, I I don't believe you need to go to school. If it's, I've, I'm proof. And I don't mean this in a, I don't know, a pretentious way. Um, I'm not the best artist, but I have taught myself. So of course, um, I didn't need to go to school. Like I could learn some things from school, but what I've been told from people who I do know have gone to art schools is that really, it's like with normal school like they don't really prepare you for actually working in real life uh, situations or whatever so long story short i just didn't go to school um am i a fan of criminal by ed brubaker and sean phillips i am a fan i have seen the original artwork for that but i've yet to finish collecting his stuff i recently got uh the fade out and kill or be killed I follow religiously as well like I've got some issues signed by him in the trade paperback uh, but Sean Phillips artwork is like is insane it's very similar to Charlie Adlard as well and they're friends as well uh, question how much of the DK story has Ronnie shared with you has he told you the whole story with Twist already no he hasn't and do you know why one i tell him not to tell me two i do not want to accidentally leak something and three i love reading the comic as a fan like i can re i can only really appreciate the comic after ronnie's done all the lettering um and that's when i'm like i have this weird disconnect where it's like because it was so long since i drew the issue it's like i'm seeing it for the first time in a weird way uh, so, yeah, I, I I know some things. I don't know identities of people, so don't ask me. Um, Ronnie just likes to confuse me and tell me about things that's thirty issues down the line that has no bearing on what I'm drawing now. Um, 
just to get me excited or whatever or scared if it's something I haven't drawn before because there's some crazy shit that I have not ever thought about drawing before that I'm going to have to draw a lot of um, that doesn't, doesn't give anything away for you but yeah I, I, I know some things like I know the plot for the next couple of issues up to issue 6 the synopsis basically um, but again everything can change because he's a very flu he's, I don't know how to explain his way of writing because I'm not an expert in comic writing in general but his approach is the same way as I when I draw his approach of writing is the same as when I draw like we have a loose framework uh, but we tend not to stick to it because we just want to change things all the time so like he can say oh this is going to happen in this issue but by the time I get to it, it doesn't happen, so we don't. Oh god. We don't really like beat ourselves up if it's not perfect straight away. If that makes sense. Okay. What else do we have? It just goes to show what chatting and sharing on social media can achieve. So glad you sent the images to running your eyes. Great, thank you. I really enjoyed the back and forth. Yeah, I really, again, I keep saying I did not expect so many questions because I've not been able to do any work really. Uh, this should just be a general chat. This is why Ronnie should have come on as well. Or why we hope next week when we do a stream that we'll both be on it because I set up a window for him to, to show up here as well, so. Uh, you should get the sword shot in the comic somewhere. Yeah, I'm definitely going to put it in. I'll probably do it so that you see like the reflection of zombies or whatever. Uh, comic color versus black and white, which we enjoy doing more. I I love black and white um, because you can make the images look really cool. And again, the influences that I have, they specifically, uh, you know, they draw in this style as well. Like it's a heavy black and white art style. But I think the colour adds something to it, like a hell of a lot more. Um, and even for me, like as a as a main inker or penciler and inker, like having to colour, I've had to learn as well, pretty much on the job. Um, I have some experience with colouring stuff because of not only do I do fashion photography, but I also do uh, design work for the fashion company that I work for. So. I do get to learn some colouring uh, that way. But I think, like, especially in our case, for the people who said when we first started the comic, oh, it's just a copy of The Walking Dead and it looks like The Walking Dead. Well, the colour just helps make it look a hell of a lot better, <laughs> in my opinion. So I love the black and white, especially when you see the big pages, like the original pages. But I'm really proud of doing the colouring. Because again, like each time I've done a page, I've had to learn how to do it better each time. And like this issue, like I really, I keep saying like a lot. I really improved colouring um, for this second issue. So I really like this. If, if you don't know what this page is, this is the first page for issue two. And it's a, um, it's a flashback uh, sequence basically. Because the end of issue one, um, you know, the writer's being interrogated, who are you? And so this image is supposed to be like, I was going to do it where we are in the same room as the writer, and then like he has like these bubbles around him to show that he's thinking of it, but I wanted to do a more poster version of it. Uh, so these sequences are all memories and things that are going to happen later on in the comic. Like, I really like this image. Of the rider burning down a house and he's killed some unfortunate family. This guy is kind of interesting, um, but I can't say anything else about apart from that. Then we've got a tease. Is it the zombie king? Is it a normal king? Who knows? And then we've got another Indian type guy with a tomahawk. I'm really looking forward to doing this clown because, like, this is really fucked up. He cut the hand off this dude and then he also cut a bit of the arm off so he's literally just got like an arm stump in his hand which is so funny 
and it's like what not funny and he's got a straight razor which he he cut with but yeah like to answer the question like i love color especially when i'm coloring it myself um because again like i'm making i'm making proper artwork now there's a reason for me to do artwork not just for myself but to share it with you lot and i don't know anything about this guy i don't know anything about the doomsday couple they're just sat in a house watching the moon all lovey-dovey while there's a load of zombies trying to claw from but they've kind of broken the pipe so maybe they're gonna start climbing on each other to get to them who knows and then these are just some fucked up zombie corpses that i like doing I'll, what i've been doing lately is adding a lot more grossness to the zombies um so like maggots and worms and shit and then in the zombie panels in the actual comic like you see a load of flies as well which is standard but i do like adding that uh what else i do like the walking dead i love the comic but i'm just not a fan of the tv show anymore because it just did too many decisions that i didn't agree with but i'm not gonna get into that uh, you quit art school when you realized it wasn't teaching you anything yeah exactly like it's just one of the things like you can just you can just you can just draw and then if the image is crap go on youtube and find out how to draw again like how to draw properly um i learned to draw from a friend of mine uh, called jonathan rector who's on youtube he's a canadian artist and another youtube channel for coloring there uh, was k michael russell and then to learn how to like draw the head uh, i should do something i'll just draw something random because otherwise this stream's gonna get super boring <laughs> um but like the way to like draw a head it's pretty simple when you when you learn it i mean i'm not perfect at it but it's basically there's a youtube channel uh called proko p-r-o-k-o -O, um and he showed you how to structure a head using the andrew loomis way which andrew loomis is a amazing artist teacher uh, but this is pretty much the method so like you're just drawing a sphere and then this cross section like if you're drawing that circle like this then it's a profile shot so obviously the forehead would be there and it's lagging <laughs> the nose then the ear would go in this section the eye you know it's pretty much a head and then if the shallower you do it the more tilt is and then you draw a center line which determines the middle of the head obviously um draw this little wedge shape cut into it because this is the eye bit there and then this line is like where your cheek starts to like pop out so men when you're drawing men you normally do it like really sharp if you're doing it for female then you you do a softer curve or whatever draw the ear in that section so like wherever that section is is where the ear goes um and then the eyes can fit there then the shape oh. of the nose and then you've got a nostril and then the mouth like you draw a circle so you have this shape so that you know the mouth curves around and so we'll go like that Than doing the forehead like this is a sketching stage so like it's never perfect the first time especially for me so in this stage this is where i'm like if i stuck to this section of that sphere that i originally drew then obviously the head's going to be too big here the nose might be too big but obviously everyone looks different um so that's how you get your characters to look different is just sh change the shape of everything that you're drawing on them as long as they have the the structure of a head You can pretty much do what you want. Then the eyes just fit in there. And 
looking that way. And then you do the hairline. Like this is the shape that I, this is what I do for every single head. So you've got sideburns. And then you can determine where the hairline split is. So like Tristan, his hair line goes like that. So he has his hair coming back like this. And this all this is all meeting to a back point. And then I always like have these like strands of hair coming out because he always slicks his hair back so it's never perfect all the time. This is a crappy head, but you get the idea. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know if that was a question but yeah I'm just saying like you can learn this just by going on YouTube you don't need art school uh, you can go to art school if you like having debt uh, Mark Scott says I can hear Ronnie now history 50 has a dinosaur and a killer robot in it god I wish uh, what else we got here Julian I assume this guy is the artist of DDK. This isn't Julian Cannon, is it? You know what? Well, if <laughs> I doubt it is because he knows that I'm the artist. <laughs> uh, do you listen to music while you draw or brainstorm? Yeah, I listen to music all the time because I hate silence. That's why I've got music on now. Like The music I listen to is what you can hear in the stream. Your art doesn't look like The Walking Dead. I like that art, but I like yours too, so they don't look the same to me. Thank you. Like. I admit, like, some of the pages did look a bit like Charlie Adlard, but that comes down to when you're learning to draw, you find people that you are attracted to in the art. So, obviously, you're going to pick up some things that they do. But it's a problem if you only just look up to what they draw because you're just going to look exactly like them. So, what do you do? You then look for another artist and then you'll pick up some things that you like from them um, and then you just incorporate into your, into your own artwork and eventually it becomes something else because you aren't drawing you you can never unless you're tracing their artwork you can never make it look exactly the same because you don't have their body parts to draw with or whatever you don't have their mentality you don't have how they learned to draw or whatever so hopefully that makes sense uh, nice choice of calling the clown his outfit. Thank you. That was Ronnie's idea, the black and yellow. Some of the zombies seem a lot more intelligent. Yeah, in the first stage, which is what we see here, and I'll just pull up the page as well. Um, it's in the thumbnail, so I'm going to show it. Uh, but this guy is not fully a zombie. Which means... That he's going to be a lot more agile which is the reason why in the comic he's actually jumping um because again like anything you've learned in the walking dead don't think of it the same way as how doomsday kingdom should be because we're doing our own thing like we're more inspired with like the last of us like they had different types of zombies we'll have different types of zombies which i hope ronnie's mentioned before if not that's a spoiler <laughs> but yeah so like the ending of issue two is this so I'll just briefly show it for those who haven't yet read it but he's not fully zombified like his eyes are starting to like get all fucked up um, he's got blood on him like if you read the issue you'll find out where the blood came from Tristan after his little incident uh, I think it's funny because I always draw him obviously with his hair slicked back because you know that's what you would do if you had long hair and you had a fringe um, not too long here but since he's been stressed out in the second half of the comic he's not really paid attention to putting his hair right um, so in this moment of peace for him he's like he goes to the bathroom to clean himself up just to, just to get himself ready for facing what the hell has happened in this issue um, and so like there his hair's all perfect it's all back to how it normally is but now in the in the second, in the third issue, his hair is going to be all, all over the place again. Because again, the zombie is trying to come, come into him. So I'm going to try and draw some of this uh, live. <laughs> 
So this is what the process of the comic is basically. I do a sketch just like Ronnie will write down some crap in a notebook and then he'll type it up all proper like and I do the same thing but I just redraw and redraw until I get the image I want. Okay. The colour just makes the whole thing pop. Great use of depth and shadow. Thank you. <laughs> Who doesn't love creepy zombie clowns? Okay. This is Julian from the trailer park, boys. How it goes, boys. Uh, Johnny Greencloud, you wish you knew how to draw. And Julian, I can draw a mean stick figure. That's all drawing is. Look at this image. Before I started putting on like cylinders and circles for the torso and the arms and stuff. What's this? It's a skeleton, basically, or a stick figure. So you got, oh my god, one arm, connection, forearm. That's his uh, shoulder. Then the only thing different in this stick figure is adding the clavicle, which is the neck bone, where the neck comes in. So you do these little dots, and then do another one. So there you go, you can see that's where the arm goes up or down. The shoulders can raise up and down so that the clavicle changes shape depending if his arms are down or up. Then just I've drawn one center line and then underwear shape for his pelvis. Two dots there, bump, bump, and then four shortened. So obviously the line's a lot shorter and then just do a triangle. If you saw through his leg, his foot would be like that. You know, so what is this? This is a stick figure. <laughs> then you just gotta look at putting shit on top. It's like there's his legs. And it, again, you break it down, it's just cylinders. Like, so his legs and arms, the simplest shape you can do is a cylinder, which is why it's so easy for me to draw even though I'm not perfect at it, but when I draw the rider, because of all these pieces on his arm and his legs, is essentially what I've just drawn um, here. And then I'm just connecting it and then I'm just thickening it up with fabric if they've got clothes on. I mean, it helps I've got an actual figure I can use as a reference as well. Um, but yeah, like. There's a hand, thumb, finger, fingers, ball, another ball. Think of it as an action figure. Look at an action figure and then just apply that to drawing. Like I've literally just drawn a stick figure. <laughs> this, this is a thing that people say, like if you are, artists say this like when you're learning, like if you can draw a stick figure, you can, you can learn to draw. It's essentially just doing extra, just learning extra shapes. Like, this is like a uh, pentagon. So like for a hand, it's a pentagon, it's a triangle. That point of the triangle is the knuckle. Then you can do like four circles and you can do sausages. It's like one sausage, two sausage. But do it in a, in a curved fashion. So obviously these fingers are gonna get super long, but like that's a very crude example, but that's essentially what you're doing. And then it's just a case of redrawing it. But like I say, if you just go on YouTube, there's tons and tons and tons of drawing tutorials. It's not rocket science, really. <laughs> okay. Uh, you think me and Money make a great team? I hope so. <laughs> it's so weird that people made this comment as well. That it's like, it's essentially we're Robert Kirk and Charlie Adlard and I hate saying that because I don't think I'm anywhere near as talented as them. But it's true like in the fact that I'm from England, I'm the artist and Ronnie's from America and he's the writer just like Kirkman's from America and he's the writer and Charlie's from England as well. Charlie only lives like an hour, like 45 minutes away from me. So you just go to the com his comic book shop and you'll see him there sometimes when he's dropping off 
uh, the signed comics. And that's where I get all my signed comics from. Okay. Are people getting bored yet? <laughs> uh, I don't know how many people are in this chat because I've... To, all I've got is the chat window open. Are we still got people in? I do not know. Let's have a quick look. Uh, but yeah. Did someone asked something about... Oh yeah, my own comic. I, I do have one, but I've not got anything really to show yet. Uh, let me just check. Let's have a look at the numbers and depress myself. 54 people are watching still. That's cool. Um, I'm going to message Ronnie, see if he's coming in anytime soon. Because I'll just keep streaming until he comes, hopefully. Because I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm literally drawing. <laughs> drawing and drawing and drawing. Okay, let's have a look at more questions. I'm never going to get this page done tonight, no. <laughs> the, um, what I'm going to do for the streams, to be honest, uh, starting from next week, uh, not sorted out the day yet, but I'm going to paint um, the SIG series for issue three. So a quick recap for those who haven't seen the signature series or don't know what it is. When you go inside the comic... Uh, this is the inside cover, so whatever this image is, is what the Signature Series is. So the Signature Series is a limited edition print that comes with a signed comic, and the image itself is actually is signed by us both as well, so that the price that we charge like helps pay for the postage back and forth. Um, so Sig 2, uh, the Issue 2 Signature Series is going to be this image which I've shown here and then I'll show you the first issues one because then it'll make sense for what I'm doing for the second uh, for the third issue I'm getting confused now because I never thought I'd do more than one issue on anything I never knew I was going to do a comic book <laughs> really I didn't plan to be doing a comic book when I first got in touch with Ronnie uh, but such is life Let me just pull up the picture. So this is the first image, the first Sig series image, which was my f first attempt at doing a painting. Um, this was digital as well. This is in Photoshop. Um, but the the third issue signature series is going to be another painting. And I plan to do this for the second issue, but I just never got around to doing it. But I'm doing it now. And we're going to be doing the zombie from issue one, which I mentioned before, which is this. So this zombie is from issue one, the one with like his arm almost coming off and his eyeballs popping out of his head nearly. Um, this next, the issue three six series is going to be a painting, which I'm really excited to do because. I, I obviously tried to make my paintings like super realistic but with the fact that it's a zombie like all of the rotted flesh the flies the maggots and shit like there's little indications of maggots and stuff i need to fix some of the the body there and i'm going to show like his mangled arm as well just to make it a little bit more interesting but that's going to be the the print that we do limited to 150 for issue three so next week um You'll probably see me painting this, um, and hopefully Ronnie will be actually get some time. We might do it on a Saturday. I'm not sure if a Saturday is a good time, because um, I just assume that people will obviously have more free time on a weekend. But I don't know if Ronnie's got videos planned or whatever. But I went all out in this, like doing all the detailing for the the leather, like different scratches from different fights that he's had. Um, this scar is something I added. Uh, just for fun like I don't know if we're if we have a scene for it but I also did it on the rider which actually let me get some pictures of the rider I don't know how many people follow me on Instagram so you might not have seen the close-ups another fun thing this is a scene from the feeding post animation that I'm doing 
<coughs> this is just a test one. Do you ever want to see what the rider looks like? <laughs> Bald. <laughs> that was a progress shot. Uh, let me pull up. Figure. I should have done this. I should have released these images on April Fools. Because there was a lot of people questioning is this a real thing? Like, can they buy it? Um, talking about the figure. I'm just trying to find it. Hmm. It might be on my hard drive. Uh, let me see if there's any questions. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'll try and show you my comic in about 10 minutes. Uh, I'm just waiting for Ronnie to reply. A stick figure, lol, yeah, from you. Why is it always an American writer and a British illustrator? We're taking over the world. We take over your acting jobs and do a better job at American accents than you do. <laughs> uh... What are my favourite comics to read? Kill or Be Killed. Outcast, but I haven't caught up on that for a few issues. The Walking Dead is my number one favourite comic. Um, the Rubber Ducky in the bathtub. <laughs> yeah, I had some ideas for that. Uh, but we, we're not doing that, what I thought. Uh, people really undervalue stick figures when drawing. It's the, it's the easiest way to like get a pose. Uh, sweet daddy Jesus. Dude, that's really inspiring. I've never had real experience trying to really like give it a going out, but I've always enjoyed drawing. That's cool. Uh, yeah, Spin, do a review. I loved your unboxing video. You were quite nervous on that as well, but you was good to me. Do I purposely leave open the areas for text? Yeah. Um, in issue one, like, the writing wasn't really done until the last minute. So most of the pages were already done. Um, but for this issue, like, I have most of the script. Like, the script dialogue will change. Um, but it gives me an idea of, like, where to put it. Like, if you want, I can show you the process images behind the scenes of what the pages look like before you see the final image in the comic. And you'll see that I did um, just like really crude circles just to say that's where the speech should be. Sometimes Ronnie will tweak it, obviously, if it fits it. Um, but yeah. I obviously, I obviously try and make sure there's room for a lot of dialogue, but also I need to make sure that we have a good presence in the panel itself uh, for a picture. <sighs> I didn't know how tired I'd get <laughs> talking so much. Do you come up with all what the characters look like in Doomsday Kingdom, or does Ronnie have specifics? Yeah, um, Tristan, uh, Ronnie gave me some pictures. Like he said, reference Aaron Paul, which I never did. Like I only found out that was a reference uh, suggestion after the fact. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll look at certain actors that I like. Because uh, it's cool in it, just thinking about what actor could potentially play a character. But obviously, I wouldn't be drawing, even if I picked a celebrity, I wouldn't be drawing them exactly how they are in real life. Because if the comic gets big, they could easily just point it out and say, You've used our likeness, we're going to sue you because you've made money by using our face in the comic. Um, so most of the time, like, Ronnie has descriptions, um, which I can show you the issue two one in a second as well. Um, he'll say, he obviously he knows what people look like, but he won't know until I've actually drawn it because anything can change. Um, I might not like drawing it in a certain way, so I'll obviously just show him what I've drawn. And most, like, he's not, he's not said, oh, it needs changing. The only one that didn't need changing, which I can actually show as well, uh, was Katie. Uh, Katie was funny because he described her 
as like a cute girl but not you know like a supermodel uh, looking girl like she needs to be quite quite average but geeky and uh yeah like i kind of drew her she kind of looked like a lesbian <laughs> i don't mean to be offensive like that i just i know lesbian people and i like lesbian people <laughs> like the friends are lesbians so yeah it was just a thing that happened that she ended up looking a certain way now i'm just trying to find the picture but he'll yeah he'll generally describe it and then i'll just draw it and then we'll see what happens okay here we go I'm losing track of all my windows so this was the very first draft of katie when it was called it was a, when it was called dead and living now obviously she looks nothing like it and these are what i was talking about where these kind of look like child adlard drawings i've seen it's obviously changed my style because i've just got better at drawing uh, but that was like the final look like it was just to show that she has freckles she wears glasses she's got a v-neck t-shirt and obviously people will make the comparison because people love making comparisons to shit without really thinking it through that, oh she looks like Andrea well yeah she might because she's a generic blonde looking person she's also got freckles which is hard but it was the t-shirt as well that people were moaning about but if you read the second issue you'll see that every bar person apart from Tristan who's the bar manager they all wear v-neck t-shirts um, you know we've got another character that is not in the comic yet that I can't wait to show uh, she's called Crow. And she kind of looks like St uh, Stephanie Beatrice from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Which I didn't know her when, until after I drew this image. But she's a Native American character that we've got. That's got a brother. Um, and she's like... She's as skilled with a bow and arrow like Daryl is. With a crossbow. But her... She's way more advanced. Like She can like shoot like multiple arrows like super fast. Like jumping along the trees especially when we get to like the wooded scenes and like the camp uh, areas where they're based it's going to be really some really cool shit uh then i had these ideas for kickstarter which i'm going off track again but cool shot of the rider before again this is not the appearance of the rider in the comic because i didn't have a description of him i was just testing out what the armor might look like because again ronnie never even said what the armor was supposed to look like really uh, which is it was a cool image but not yet got to do that uh, what else I was trying to find the script but I can't find it so never mind but yeah like if we go quickly to the bar like they've all got black t-shirts this is Tristan's friend Shahid and then we've got Matty who is a dwarf <laughs> character but yeah you can see that Katie changed like her parents but, but going back to the colour thing like I'm so glad we're doing it in colour because I get to experiment we're doing like shiny surfaces laminated bar counters and stuff I even went so far in these panels to draw <laughs> American football and the detail so small like you wouldn't even really see this when once you get the physical comic but I just like making everything detailed and then like drawing these this bar display was a pain in the ass we've got um, absolute vodka uh, Bombay Sapphire Gin Jack Daniels uh, some Bacardi some other whiskies and then just like a load of wines because it's mainly a wine display and out of like it's supposed to be all these it's supposed to be all these high priced wines and shit and Marty's favourite drink is just the stereotypical American whiskey of Jack Daniels <laughs> uh, anyone else how do I know where to place the shading the easiest way is to determine where the light is coming from. In this scene, um, they're in a bar, so obviously you've got these lights, so that's the main 
focus. So obviously the lights are on the wall, the direction of light is going there, so it's obviously just the opposite side is where the shadow is going to be. For black t-shirts, I don't do it fully black uh, because I want to show some kind of definition in the t-shirt. Um, yeah, it's just, sometimes I don't really pay attention to where the light's coming from. As long as the image looks like pretty cool, that's more important than it being super correct to me. Okay, what are we going on now? See you, Tammy. Uh, I don't have a playlist for this song, but if you go on, if you just search new retro wave YouTube channel, um, pretty much all the music has come from that. Katie looks like my graphics teacher at college, who is also named Katie. <laughs> cool. Chorus style's a bit like Katniss Everdeen. Oh god, I hope not. <laughs> okay. Wankstain. Oh shit, surprise live stream. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ronnie's going to be coming in soon. I've messaged him, but he hasn't replied back yet. I'm just streaming until he comes in, I mean. I'm not in a rush. Yeah, see, Spin, you've got fans for your unboxing. Do a review of the comic. We need to see more reviews. Like, we've only had like five, possibly less than that. Yeah, I, I plan to have a proper time for the stream, Mark. It's just this was, this is a test. So if Ronnie does come in, uh, he's going to be over there in a window. Because uh, we've never done a dual stream before, so like we have plans in the future to do like a commentary uh, of issue one, so people can ask questions about it. We might do it live, or it might be pre-recorded. I don't know yet, but we do plan. I do plan to have like a set time. Obviously, tonight is just a one-off, just to see what's going on. Oh god! Well, Ben's still in the chat. <laughs> Thanks for the Instagram post. And yeah, there's there's people who keep saying as well, like how can we get the comic in comic book shops? I know no one's asked this question tonight specifically, but you really we really need the support of everyone to tell their comic store owner about the comic for us because we can get in touch with them, but it means more if it comes from someone who's not, you know super invested in it. I mean, I know you're fans of the comic, but I don't know how to explain that, if that even makes sense. I don't want to sound like we're begging for uh, comic shops to take us on or whatever, but it's just cool that if people keep talking about the comic, then that's how we can get the comic out to more people, because right now, we know we're just focusing on these small pre-order windows, which a lot of people miss out on, but we can't handle constant orders, because otherwise there'll be no time for us to make the comic. Uh, spin, Spin, you've already started the review. Awesome. <coughs> uh, map, I believe, started the DK Apocalypse. Became the Umbrella Corp. And then Map News, etc. Yeah. Uh, map have taken over in the comic timeline. I don't know if people saw the the helicopter and the other news references. Uh, successful test, thank you. This has been so much fun to watch, James. I've really not done anything. I've just answered questions. I'm going to try and draw something. I need to do... I need to... Oh my god, where's my screen gone? There we go. Let's try and draw this figure. It's probably not going to go as well because... The pressure of drawing live, it's too much for me to take. And I'm not yet like fully fleshed out this area. I'm gonna clean up this bit so you can see what is actually going on. Because the questions have dwindled down and Bunny still hasn't answered back. So he must be doing something important. Last time he was on Facebook was like an hour ago. So what I'm doing is I'm just 
I've changed this layer blue so it's easy for me to draw in black over the top of it. Gonna lower the opacity. Gonna take these off because I don't need them. This is gonna be a borderless panel. This frame is just to make sure that I definitely get the important stuff here because when the comet gets cut, you know, this section, this is gonna be missing, but to make a successful full page width print, you need to make sure you extend over the area in which the printer will cut it. Because if I stopped here, there's no guarantee that it's gonna get cut off perfectly. So this part, so it looks like a, it looks like a borderless panel like properly. Need to clean up the organization. The beauty of working digital, <laughs> just put everything into folders. Get it out of the site. Okay. So yeah, so just a quick recap of what we're doing. Of page one of issue three. We are continuing right off where issue two finished. Tristan's point of view, we see the intruder coming in, leaping midair angry towards us, spit and blood coming from his mouth. I'm going to do like some cool trails of blood to show that he jumped up. Um, so like the blood's going to be like splashing out of his mouth. The blood on his hands is going to be blood. Um, and obviously this person is infected and it's just a stage one zombie. And then the second one is a closer shot. So we're going to have like Tristan leaning against the door trying to stop it while the creep it's like opening the door was like Rawr! doing all that shit acting people acting okay uh, tim you said you told a buddy thank you at your local comic shop uh pre-orders haven't been sorted out yet uh, i'm basically drawing this issue now so i'm hoping to be done in three or four weeks i mean that's a miraculous speed if I wasn't streaming tonight, I'd probably have finished this page. Um, and obviously waiting for the next page to be written. Uh, great stream, James. As you want, as you see, people want to know more about you. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. You're keeping me company because I live a lonely life. As I say, I'm a prisoner. <laughs> Ronnie's got me shackled up. I can't, I can't leave this table if I wanted to. Okay. So let's draw something, shall we? So this is now, I'm gonna make a new folder. So I'm gonna do, call it pencils. The first stage is what I just call the rough. It just gets the idea down so Ronnie knows what I'm actually drawing. And if he wanted me to change something, he should have said something by now. But he's like, he said, hell yeah, this is freaking epic. So we're gonna stick with it. And I've tilted the angle to make it a little bit more dramatic as well. I might do it even more. I've not decided yet. Oh, the layer's there. So this is the creep. So my pencil's there, I can see it. I took some reference pictures of myself jumping because this was a tricky pose for me. All right, so we'll just do the head. So I've kind of got the head shape in there, like it's super rough, but I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. And I also want to make sure that you can see this pencil. So I'm going to use a pen. I don't normally draw in a pen because I like to replicate the pencil because after I've done the pencil stages, I then print it out and then I draw it on the paper. Uh, again, I, I did say I was going to show you what uh, the comic looks like from a different page. So I'll do issue one, uh, show you an example of what it looks like before and then after. Trying to find the actual pictures. Where the hell are they? We'll do page one. And Mark is very lucky that he managed to get this page one because I didn't. I thought I lost this page, the original. So this is what I sketched out first. 
this one was a bit of a tighter thing. The, the problem with doing digital is that I can zoom in and I can get a lot more detail, um, which I shouldn't really do because I add the detail when I'm inking it on paper anyway. Um, and there's generally less space, so I can't get this detailed. But yeah, like this is what this is the next stage what I'm doing now. So what I just showed you here, like I do this rough stage and then I do the pencils. Like it, I got tighter there and then I got looser. <laughs> and then his face is there, but it's not even the right face either. And then obviously we, we show what the actual page looks like. I just drew it because I didn't know what the mask looked like. <laughs> like this is this is interesting as well. This is one of the skull masks from this same issue that the guys who were firing the arrows wore. Because uh, I thought it was from that faction, but then Ronnie <laughs> told me the mask needs to be different because he we didn't even like have the mask uh, in mind, like what it was actually supposed to look like until much later on. And then the final looks like that. And this page Mark managed to get hold of, which is cool. So yeah, this is all drawn with just a typical standard pen. I don't draw with anything fancy. It's just a very small tipped pen. on a sheet of paper and then you scan it and then you do the colors so yeah so i'm going to tighten up this one <laughs> hopefully it's luckily it's not quite like misery uh, there's going to be five issues to a volume Yeah, I'm the prisoner. Yeah, the second and third are going to come out together. Just so, it, again, it saves us time. Because hopefully people who order the second issue will buy the third issue as well. So now it might get a little bit quiet. Unless there's a lot of questions. it's a bit a concentration time oh God. I'm not the greatest live drawer it's too much pressure <laughs> Now, I don't know if I seize the underside of his nostrils or the front. I want to exaggerate this as well so it's like a proper mouth open. And then all of his forehead skin is going to get bunched up. software oh it's auto saving that's what the lug is again this is not the super clean version because I will do this when I actually print it out I need to make sure that it's actually looking the thing you don't normally see in zombies is actual eyebrows so obviously with this being more human he's gonna have eyebrows showing so this section here is where the ears is because his head's slightly curved up so 
so I need to make this bit a bit thinner because it's receding into the background. It's gonna have hair as well, obviously, because I need. Oh, I should actually pick up the the reference. <laughs> uh, where is it gone? Okay, I need to make sure there's no spoilers right now on my other screen. <laughs> there we go. I just need to copy and paste this screen so I can actually see. Okay. This one was kind of based off me because I cut my hair. <laughs> But yeah, like no, like I was some. This only applies to people who do artwork, and they do digital, and they also do traditional. Um, I always got annoyed that the look of the drawing didn't look like my drawings when I've printed it and I've inked over the top of it, and that's just because of the simple fact that a real pen still doesn't really replicate uh, the look of digital. So you have to be. Uh, I have to be mindful of that because I always, I always think like, to me, this is shit. Um, to you, it might be good, but by the time I've printed it and I've done the final, that's when I'm really happy because it's, you know, that that's the representation of what I want the artwork to be. And you might not even uh, think, if I try to explain this right, uh, that I'm, that this is even a big deal because to you, it might look like a good drawing um, but because I'm drawing it like I'm just super picky of things not being exact but it sometimes annoys me like I just said like until I've actually printed it and drawn it so it's got kind of finished but it's mostly black here I'm gonna add some kind of like motion blur effect as well to show that it's going quick. Just keeping an eye on where his shape of his hair actually goes. I think I need to move his eyes looking a bit more this way as well. This is again, um, this is what I was trying to say. Even though that this is like a, a normal looking head, I'm still gonna end up probably erasing this or making it lighter and then going over it again. Cause that's what art is basically. You, you're sculpting forms out of nothing. In this case, it's out of pen. Um, so if I make a, a crap drawing first, I know where it needs to improve, if that makes sense. I'm just going to indicate the blood trail because obviously he's in motion. Uh, let's see what the questions are. I'm hoping when it comes on soon because it can start. It will be easier for me to answer questions while I'm drawing because obviously someone can see it. Uh, do you do computer backups of your hard drive so that nothing can be lost when Toothless knocks over a beyond your computer? Yeah. <laughs> I almost deleted everything by accident. It was nothing to do with the cats, it was just the fact that I was being stupid because I have a separate hard drive and obviously my main hard drive on my computer and I had supposed to have deleted to make space on my external hard drive but I deleted the stuff off my computer itself and then I was really panicking. I even told Ronnie, like, Ronnie was like, oh, fucking hell, like, Shane, because, again, because I transfer from the hard drive, I thought that I deleted it from the hard drive after it had transferred. But luckily, in this case, it didn't. I didn't delete it. I transferred it, and then luckily deleted it from the main computer. So all I had to do was just, you know, retransfer it again to either copy. But now I have two hard drives <laughs> so that I don't make that mistake again. Now, this shape's gonna look a bit weird. Like, this is not his shoulder blade, even though his shoulders are coming up. But because he's wearing a loose, long sleeve top, the motion of him going down is making the top 
go up so it's like wrinkled if that makes sense needs to bunch his face up in his nose again it's very messy in this stage because later on when I redraw over it like I'll show you now like so we can actually get something interesting uh, say this was my final sketch then it was just a case of lowering the opacity again and then getting my actual pen which I did find a pen that somewhat replicates the real pen that I use um, and it's like a rough textured one so it looks like the effect of the, the ink bleeding into the page like it's very apparent like when you make it thicker like this is just really cool this is all I've done is just like doing these shapes to make an interesting shadow texture so yeah so like that's say that's the final and then I just make sure my brush is the right size normally going 15 zoom in I don't normally zoom in this much but because it's an important face I will And I'm still kind of like sketching over it because I'm going to thicken these lines up. Again, it's not the real. This isn't, this isn't the final artwork as well. And already his. the catch light. <coughs> The catch light is coming from the bathroom, so it's lighting him that way. Let's get some hair for the eyebrows. And then just change the thickness of your lines so it looks so you know what the most important lines to look at are, which in this case is the eye, the nose, and the mouth. And that's what helps sell the depth, the depth of an of a image as well. Is using thicker lines to something that's close to you, and thinner lines the more you have something in the distance. Uh, what have you said? Uh, I love my first and last pages from issue one. Gonna get them framed. <coughs> oh yeah, yeah. Mark Scott is the the lucky Mark. Good for James to be focused, actually. Join the drawing phase. Nikolai Bolinsky says, What is my favourite Marvel superhero? Yours is Doctor Strange. Hmm. I'm not sure. It's too cliche to say Wolverine, isn't it? So. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm going to have him actually looking to us in that eyes a completely different size. Again, this is the beauty of digital. Like, I could do this traditionally and just erase and erase, but it, it's time consuming. Like, if I, I like the fact if I've drawn something, I can just move it, and then when it comes to printing, I know that it's how I wanted it. So I'm being a bit sketchier because you're all watching me. Ronnie might be coming on soon. There. Uh, how long <laughs> do you think you'll be? People asking me. Oh yeah. I can be on. I can be on another hour. Another hour. Okay. Uh, as someone with no artistic talent, I never doubt the hard work involved with making such art. Yeah, it is very difficult. Even if you know how to draw, like, it's still fucking hard. <laughs> uh, a page on average is 12 to 16 hours. 
It depends on what you're drawing, really. I apologize for the slight quiet moments. <laughs> A little bit of concentration. Even if I don't fully use this image, or well, this specific drawing, I can just use it as a reference so that I know where to change it. It does look like magic sometimes when you're watching people draw. Another benefit is just copy and pasting. Because <laughs> I hate, like, drawing symmetry is very difficult. Because you're normally prone to draw them in one direction, depending on whether you're left or right handed. So there's two things you can do in software. You can flip the image, so you can do them opposite lines that feels natural. Or you can just copy and paste an element. And then just flip it. Again, when it comes to doing the final, Either. like I won't use that exact line I'll change it a little bit so it obviously looks like a different <coughs> it'll look like a different ear yeah, everyone is gonna let me know in a few minutes to see if he's gonna come on for those asking for him I've told him that the stream desperately needs the host <laughs> You're probably annoyed that I'm not really drawn much. <laughs> uh, no. I don't know what the Blitz said. I trust the mods. I forgot the mods would be active. I was thinking, oh, no one's going to want to come and mod this stream. So I'm just giving a little bit of texture so it's not just a straight line for the hair. So you can see now, like, it's starting to get cleaned up. This is this is generally what the process is. It's just a case of drawing and drawing until you're happy with it. Obviously, on a deadline for a comic, there's a point where you just have to be like, okay, that's it, I need to stop drawing this, this panel or this page and move on to the next one. So hopefully he's going to be looking like he's looking at the camera. doing his mouth really exaggerated because that's the thing about comics as well like if you just recreate like a photograph of like I can do this pose and draw it but it's not going to look like a comic book in a way it's not going to look like it's full of life or like animated or, animated is a good word to use so it's a case of knowing when to exaggerate so now I'll just do the shape of his teeth when it comes to like colouring, like they're going to be like proper yellow and just dead looking, but he's not fully dead obviously. There's going to be like spit coming out and all this kind of shit, which is going to look cool. So this, this stage, what I'm doing now is essentially the pencil stage, but I'm just drawing it in ink so that you can see it better on the stream. <coughs> It's all going to get filled in black, but it's going to have some kind of highlight. And my cat's come to say hello. Hello, baby. What are you doing? Are you finished sleeping now? Are you just going to mess about and shout on the stream? Oh my god, you're so fat. This is toothless. <laughs> I'm going to check out Kingdom Come. I've been following that game for the last couple of years. 
Hey, doing a great job hosting. <laughs> Who is it? Is it people? Ugh. It's people. You're so fat. Oh, yeah, well, Arnie, we're going to be on for another hour at least. Uh, Ronnie's going to let me know if he can come on. Bit later, not for foot's sake. <sighs> so, just not drawing it in a full black hair like I did here because obviously, the smaller the, the smaller the panel or the smaller the body part in the panel, the less detailed you need to be because it's not going to show up. But just for you, look, because I'm zooming in. Showing some kind of texture for the hair is better than just doing a, a full on black image. Any other questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, Sky it's definitely like Skyrim. That's what made me interested in it. The fact that they've tried to make it as realistic as possible. How the hell do I have time to do anything? Yeah, I don't know. Being single. So this part of the mouth's going to be in shadow. Don't know if I'm going to have his tongue sticking out. This teeth might be, might be wrong. <laughs> I'm not drawing it like super accurate because I'm. Trying to focus on streaming as well. And once I like black all this out, and then start to add spit. It will show up better. We just draw in white. I need to get rid of these lines first and then I can show you what I mean. The good thing about drawing zombies as well is that you can mess their heads up as much as you want. It's still gonna look, as long as it still looks like a head, it's gonna look cool. Because again, it's. With a zombie, obviously, you're drawing deterioration and shit. His eyes need to be a little bit more curved. And then just some skin fold in the eyes. Just make him look super wild. A quick indication of where the Adam's apple is, and then we can do some spit. So I draw over in white, to show where the spit is, and then add a black line to one of the edges. And then you get this cool effect. that makes it stand out. So it's gonna have like spit because obviously it's jumped. It's gonna like fucking, it's gonna curve and shit. 
So we'll do like a curved motion like that. And then this is just basically squiggles. <laughs> just to show the direction of the the spit kind of thing. And then because I'm doing it in colour as well, like I'll add more blood effects because I don't want to like cover too much of the artwork up uh, with blood, but for here, like I will do it. And then you can just erase out. You know, so it looks like a load of shit. <laughs> a load of shit coming out. To make it make it stand out even more, like because the lights come in from this angle, like that way. Obviously his neck will be in shadow. So this gives me more room to make the blood stand out. Hopefully that's interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, let's like I'll spend. Um, because obviously I've got to work a full-time job. As well, like I have like eight hours a night, but not all the time can I use that eight hours to just draw the comic, because I'll be super tired. Um, so obviously I need to take a break. And then, usually on a typical night, I'll do the comic for like six hours. And then I'll either use the leftover time to do something else. Or just rest. Because as I mentioned before, like I, I suffer with all the joints in my body, so... My hands like need to have a rest as well. And it's what I do at work as well, like they know. Because I'm drawing at work as well all the time, so sometimes I just don't have any energy left whatsoever uh, to actually draw so I need to like pace myself in a way so now I'm just going to quickly draw his fabric which is his, his top so obviously it's bunching up because of the wind as he like jumped down like the motion like the wind's coming the air that's passing through him is coming up so yeah he's basically the creep is lunging towards Tristan which will be in this second panel like the creep is here you're pretty much just going to see his mouth and then you've got Tristan like holding the door and then the next couple of pages is going to be fighting the zombie which is going to be cool it's going to be cool to draw in that uh, be cool if he had already bitten off part of his tongue hence the blood foam he might have <laughs> Uh, just being able to enjoy watching map live. Normally, I listen in the next day on the way to the university. Cool, man. Are you, how many people from England do we have? England is my city. <laughs> oh god, how can you write that? So as I'm looking at this now on the other screen, which is a bit smaller, he's looking that way. He still needs to look a bit more towards us. But then again, in the previous page, Tristan is about here, so it kind of makes sense, to be honest. I'm actually liking this face now that I've done it. Like, this is super extreme. Like, I'm not... I'm going to change some of it, because some of it's going to be blood, some of it's going to be spit, but it'll make more sense in the actual colouring. And that's another benefit of me colouring my own work. Like, I know where I can save time and do colour instead of doing the blacks. But since this is a dramatic shot, this is when I decide to put in more black uh, shading, uh, more shadows, because it makes the image pop a little bit better. So now his sleeve, obviously if you're standing upright, your sleeve would end there, but since it's, his arms being stretched, the sleeve's coming down a little. Is this still interesting, or am I boring everybody? And the doors, the door frames blocking, so it shows some kind of depth in the image as well. It's not just floating in the air. Now I'm just trying to figure out where the main creases of the top's going to be. 
I also don't want it to connect too close to another part of the image. In this case, being the spit. <sighs> so we got Chicago. Well, Chicago is not England. Edinburgh, Sussex, and England. Uh, Loving the join. Thank you. My half of my family is from Newcastle, from Heaven. So it's kind of, I think it's still classed as Newcastle, isn't it? Uh, I hear you about the hand needing rest of carpal tunnel. Yeah, I thought it was just that originally, but then I got diagnosed with something else, which is not great. Now I'm just indicating really loosely where the main shadow is going to be. Because obviously the light's coming this way. So the underside of the arm is going to be in shadow. But I don't want to put too much shadow because I'm going to frame him with shadow. So it carries on the theme from this page where I did like a tri just a triangle shape. Just to frame it. But yeah, I'm liking his face now. I didn't like it originally, but now I do. God. Now I'm just showing his his uh, bottom of his top ruffling in the wind. Again, because the light's going down, I'm still going to put some shadow in, so it's just a case of getting a thicker brush. And just roughly indicating where it's going to be, and I'm going to get a bit more rendery, which is shown by doing these lots of these lines, um, because it's moving fast as well. So like normally I'll just do like a solid shadow, but to give it some extra texture. I just add these thinner lines to it, so it makes it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, you would be self unconscious Yeah, I'm very self-conscious. Uh, the people that did not find it interesting are already gone. That's cool. Still interested in st seeing Stick Mantis zombie. It's cool just watching it happen. Uh, I have. I hope to get to a Walker Stalker Con at some point. Um, they look awesome. I wait. I really wanted to go on the cruise one. Um, but again, because I'm doing the comic. If I'm going to a convention, it needs to be one that I can have a table at. Um, I'm waiting to hear back to have one in Birmingham, uh, which is next month. So again, another benefit of digital. Now that I've done these bits, I can just connect these lines and hopefully that uh, joins up. Yeah, I'm pretty much just streaming now to see if Ronnie's going to come in, because he said he was coming at some point. I don't know what these folds look like yet, of the bunches. Just change it down. Again, I apologize for some of the quiet moments because I'm kind of concentrating. <laughs> Trying to concentrate as well. It's going to be great seeing the finished comic. Yeah, man. Oh, woman. <laughs> That's why I, I love... Like, this This was why I decided to stream anyway because how many comics do you follow where you get to see the process like... obviously in real time. Especially ones that hopefully one day become big. Don't know if I like that yet. Again, I'm not going too crazy with shadows. Because it's going to get coloured in. But I'm trying to understand where I put the cuff. Mm. 
And then this, this arm's getting a bit more foreshortened. So that's why the arm looks smaller. Like if you take a picture. So that's another thing to keep in mind, which I'm not perfect at that yet. But I just need to make sure it looks kind of real. Because again, this is comics. Like it doesn't have to. We're not making photographs. It's not like you can tell what is happening, even if it's not great, <laughs> greatly drawn. And then he's going to have a lot more blood on him. But again, most of it I'm going to do in colour. But we're going to make sure it is indicated. Because sometimes, like I didn't do it on this, but normally when I'm doing blood, I'll delete, uh, I'll erase out this line art for the blood because it'll look better just doing it in colour. Now I'm just making sure that the blood follows some kind of shape to the folds because that's, that's the shadow part of the fold. Because again, you're drawing with light and dark. So if that's the fold where the light's hitting it, you, you can just draw a thinner line. Um, and then this blood would curve over it if I'm drawing it. Because obviously the the fold of the top is bunching up like a tube, basically. So to extract that for the blood, it'll be go there, but then I'll do the I won't do the line straight down, I'll just push it down a little bit. And then you can just erase or draw in white. Oh my god. Why is it not fucking doing it? To separate it. And then do it again. Just makes it stand out a little bit better. So this is the blood portion, so now I'm just trying to figure out if there's any more showing. Put some up there. Again, the shape's not going to be exactly the same as that because now the fabric's moving in different portions. So that'll be enough indication for later. Is there any on his arm? Uh, So now all the hands and the arms. So that's his little bone bit that sticks out of everybody's hand. I don't know what it's called, the ulna or something like that. Uh, who else has asked questions? You talk about Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that's true. It was made to look like sweat. Okay, uh, one is trying to get on now, so give me two minutes. <clears throat> Skype call me. <laughs> In a few minutes, one is going to come on. Hopefully, you'll be able to stay on for a little bit. And he'll probably tell me off that I've not drawn really anything, but I would just blame it on you lot. Because you asked me more questions than I thought I was going to get. <laughs> when in doubt, blame the fan base. <laughs> Audit T, nice to finally meet you, James Milne. I've heard and seen nothing but great things so far. Well, thank you. I'm going to try and get this to... Oh, I'll make sure that Ronnie knows that. Uh, uh, you got a super chat. That's the first one, of, first one of the night, isn't it? We appreciate the support. The money goes to him, so <laughs> I take nothing. Okay, let's do the hand. Now, this is a tricky hand position, kind of. But if you saw earlier, it's the basic shape of a hand is this: a triangle and a pentagon. Obviously, curve it to make it look better. And then you can start off by drawing an oven mitt and then this arch because you know the middle finger is longer and then that'll be the other finger the two middle fingers like these ones always stay closer together 
Uh, but I'm not drawing. I'm not drawing a flat hand. I'm just quickly showing you what it looks like. What I'm thinking about. So in this angle, it's a pentagon, but it's curving towards us slightly. So it's a bit like that. So the fingers are coming this way. And then his thumb is outstretched like that. Thanks for showing us the art. Thanks for the super chat. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You can take the blame. I mean, I'm happy with how this turned out now. I think I'm getting a little bit more relaxed. I'm just getting really tired of talking. <laughs> not because you're asking questions. It's just, it's a lot of energy. Which is why I'm not sponsored by Rockstar Energy Drink. <laughs> This is my, I used to call this when I was streaming video games. I call it stream juice because it keeps me awake and shit. And it's half 12, like we've been streaming for two hours, 40 minutes, we've had no problems. Uh, I think Ronnie's gonna try and, Ronnie needs to just Skype me. I don't know what he's doing right now. Let me get rid of this. We'll try and draw this hand. I'm, I suck at hands. But again, you've got the resources of Google Images. You've got your own hands you can look at. <laughs> okay, so the fingers are bending in, which is good. So there's a little bit of fat sticking out. Like when you do that, I don't know if you can see it. Like a little bit of skin bunches up so I've just exaggerated it there because again that's what doing artwork or comic book artwork is to me it's just taking the small things and just exaggerating it so you can see what it is because by the time it gets zoomed out like you might not even see it so it's always like bigger is better <laughs> anyone else try pick up a pen and give it a try yeah you can well Annie do you do I follow you on Instagram? Or do you follow me on Instagram? And do you do artwork? I'm sure some of you do. Because I've seen some cool stuff. So his thumb there, I kind of messed up by adding this shadow. But his thumb knuckle is there. Now it's too sausage shapey, but we'll fix that. Generally as well, like, the same thing with faces. To draw a man's face looking more like a man's face, like, you have sharper angles. And then when you're doing women, you soften up. So, like, with the fingers, like a man's finger, looking at it from the side, the knuckles are always, like, a lot more sharper. And then you just contrast it with these bump shapes. And then a, a woman's finger would be more... Soul. Like, it looks like a fucking penis there, kind of. But you get the gist. The gist. So now I've just got to draw his skin stretching because it's also twisting, so we've got this shape going on. might want to get the fingers more closer to me. Have the, the fingers more to the camera, sorry. And another thing I found that can really fuck up drawing hands and fingers is the position of the nails, because you can draw the same shape and draw the nail like that so it's more sideways or if you want to make it look like it's more frontal like the fingernail position changes the whole look of the finger which is something to keep in mind when you're doing fingers because you may end up with a, a finger that looks like it's facing the wrong way when it needs to be facing a different way just gonna shrink that in a little bit So you can see kind of the, the, the pentagon shape is still happening. It's just being more curved because it's 
come into us a little bit. It's not like a super straight flat shot. Skin. Again, I suck at hands, <laughs> so I shouldn't really be drawing hands. <laughs> the cats are all asleep. Uh, well, Arnie, did you say something about it? Go to sleep, relaxed. <laughs> okay. Ronnie's asking what Skype is. You want Skype? No. Oh. I got you. Right. Let's see if this works. Oh, it says it's offline. Well, that's annoying. It's going to take the music off. Hmm. For some reason, it didn't work. Yeah. We've Skyped each other before, but it says it's offline. Oh, he's made a new one. Okay. Uh, let me just add. How do I get a new person? Mm -hmm. I don't use Skype a lot either. <laughs> oh my god, how do I add a contact? Do I just add the email in? I don't know how to do it. How do I add? <laughs> I don't even know what my Skype thing is. Uh, not letting me add someone. Okay, Ronnie's going to try finding me. <laughs> when Ronnie comes in, I'm going to have to take a couple of minutes to attend to my girl cat because she's doing something. Oh my god. Hope this works. <sighs> Bear with us dudes and dudesettes. Yeah, hands are difficult. Oh, it's up seven, Jim. Found my Skype name. <laughs> oh, God. I suck at online stuff. Alright, who is, who's still here? Have we got more people? We've still got, we've had a decent stream. We're like 50 people on average. That is super cool. And we've been streaming for nearly three hours, holy crap. Two hours, 50 minutes. This is well longer. I'm going to leave this image up just so everyone can see the very small progress that we've made. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, here we go. Ronnie Hayes is calling. What the f Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, it stopped my music for some reason as well. I don't know if this is going to work or not. This is going to be very interesting. Ay, ay, ay. Is it calling? Oh, we've got some kind of connection. Hey, Ronnie Hayes. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to be able to hear me or if I can hear him yet. Let's just wait. Why is it showing that window? Go away. Testing, testing. <laughs> I hope this doesn't mess up my fucking stream. I want red. Why one red? Can I turn the settings down? Oh god. My quality control is crap. Why can't I hear anything? 
I bet I've screwed up. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. I heard something. Testing, testing. Oh, my God. I can hear myself. No problem. Ronnie Hayes in this bitch. Oh, okay. oh. Uh, what? Oh god damn it. Well you'd be able to, no, you won't be able to because I'm streaming. Um so you'd have to Yeah 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 I can see you. You're on the stream now. Yep. I think everyone else can hear me. It's fine, we'll just lip read. Alright. Okay, I Yeah, yeah, I had something like that on mine as well, but I just had to reset a password or something. I couldn't remember the actual login. Yeah, yeah, you can pop it out. I've just, I've just got a pop out chat to save on the internet. It says my connection is red on Skype. I'm worried, <laughs> but I'm, but I'm green on. Thingy. You had uh, two super chats as well. It's like seven, seven dollars. Hey, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Now that you're here, I'm just gonna go away for two minutes. Yeah, I just need to sort out my other cat. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, just catch up. Hey, buddy. One sec. Can it not hear you? Okay, that's weird. I can hear. Okay, let me just change something. Uh, say something. Okay. Can you not hear anything at all? Oh, what the? Hello. Uh, yeah, Hello. Uh -oh. <laughs> what the fuck? That's weird that I can hear you. It's supposed to come through the desktop on OBS. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it, I'm on it. I know what you mean. Uh, let's keep talking. 
We'll just wait to see the bar move. Speakers. In Windows. Oh, in OBS. Uh, one sec. This might fuck up. This, I, I can see, I'm in the windows, I can see a bar moving. If I change this, oh my God, see what happens now, I bet no one can hear me. Yeah. It's weird because you're coming through my speakers and the music was coming from my speakers and now Skype has cancelled the music playing through the speakers. I can still hear you through the speakers, so technically they should hear me. Because on OBS, the desktop audio is where the media player was playing the music and your voice is coming through that, but it's not coming through the stream. Look, yeah. This is why I wanted to check this before. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, back to this. I'm just worried this is going to change the palm ever since now. Now, my microphone is still working. The desktop audio properties. I'm also using a voice software uh, thing as well, which makes the audio cleaner for my end. So I'm just wondering if I need to check another channel uh, and find which one is the right one to pick for you. Gotcha. Okay. Fuck me. Yeah. I'm just going to quick Google it as well. Yeah, it's not moving now because the it used to be the media player, but now it's just dead. That's why they can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah, going through it now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now it's on oh no, my microphone's still working. Uh, voice. Uh, somebody said whatever you I did a it. minute ago. It. It's done now. You got it? All right, so everyone should be able to hear you now. All right. Yeah, because I'm using All the right, software so... that I was telling you about, which will make your microphone sound even better. Um, it's just a case of setting up the channels because you can you can either have it record the other yeah. person, like if they're in Skype, or not have it show through the stream, but I can still hear you. Um, oh, gotcha. So now let's just wait for someone to say something because now the bar's moving for you. All right. It should be any second now because we're on a 30 second delay and it's been about 30 seconds. So there he is. Okay. we're There we go. Ah, it worked. You guys can all hear right, me. <laughs> all right. I just need to quickly change this window because for some reason it's showing your, showing all the sky uh -huh. icons for some stupid reason. Oh. 
Am I frozen on top? Yeah. It looks like. Oh. Uh, I don't know if like I can handle this, but this is what the test is for. Yeah. Hey, yeah, guys, we're also playing around with this to see if, you know, obviously our internets can handle it and all that, but. Uh, yeah, my video's frozen. I can see it. Hopefully, it'll clear up soon, but at least you can hear me. <laughs> I'd rather have a frozen screen than no audio, uh, to be honest. But I can read the chat. So, who's ever... Skype's disappeared again. Yeah, who's ever... Well, this picture's frozen now. If it's not one thing, it's another, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need to see me. Just hear me. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I... Uh, Yes, right Matt Fam, I can read the chat, so we're all good. Yeah, if it keeps freezing, I just have to keep toggling on and off the Skype thing. So I'm just going to say I didn't get a yeah. lot of work done because the chat <laughs> was yeah. crazy asking me a lot of questions. Pretty active. I've literally gone through the history of my life and oh, the yeah? history, of, history of the comic showing shit. And, um, but I'm happy with how this page is coming now. I've just started drawing the actual dude all close up yeah you can see i'm just getting a load of like spit flying in the background <laughs> um, i need to like add some more but obviously it'll make more sense in color and against yeah. the black the black in the background. i can't i can't wait for that doomsday yeah. kingdom video game listen to me guys i i got it stuck in my head about a video game idea yeah. i wanted to do and uh for like two weeks straight i couldn't get it out of my mind but it was um, utilizing stuff uh, in your atmosphere. Like, for example, um, you guys know that we're going to start doing the Fortnite videos and Fortnite is real big and popular. Well, they utilize materials to build ramps and all this other stuff. Now, that's not at all what I want to do. Hells no. Fortnite could be its own thing. But I was thinking, man, it'd be so cool. Like, for example, Last of Us, they got nail bombs. So you find nails, you find scissors, and you craft these little weapons. Like, you know, one's a stick with a, or a pipe with a knife, and the other one's a, a nail bomb. So I was thinking, man, it would be so awesome to have this, this big, huge map. It's first person, and you're, let's say you're right in the middle. You're on a plane first. The plane is going down. You got to jump out, and then everyone can land scattered all throughout, kind of like a battle royale, how they release you. And then you got to go and scavenge resources. Like, let's say you find nails. Now you collect nails everywhere. You can use the nails to, um, you can use nails and wood to board up windows, doorways broken walls and there's even some walls that you can break through like if you're stuck and trapped and there's so many zombies here uh, you can break through certain areas as long as you have like the right equipment to get through and yada 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 and then you would use your nail and boards to board it up to slow the zombies down or keep them out uh you can also use this the nails because you're collecting a ton of them for nail bombs i think that'd be fun and kind of like paying homage to the last of us they have nail bombs uh but those are just two little ideas. You would find wood everywhere, collect materials, and you would find nails and collect those as well as the guns and the weapons. Uh, but it wouldn't just be that. You would find other stuff as well, like wood, brick, metal, similar to uh, Fortnite. But again, no, none of that stupid jumping shit, none of that you know, building ramps, this and that and the third. You'd build uh, doorways. You'd break through some kind of an interactive – uh, city landscape, so to speak, but also a first person shooter. I think that would be so freaking awesome. Instead of just having these permanent hallways, like in Call of Duty, you have permanent hallways. Imagine having a landscape where you could pretty much tunnel in and out. There would only be um, certain areas that you can't get through. Obviously, if you don't have the right tools or you don't find the right this, this, and this, you'd only be able to break through wood or brick or whatever. But I love that idea so much because then it changes – every time you play, it changes it so much. If you get stuck down this alley and you know like, OK, there's a guy over here and there's zombies over here because you're fighting three different things. You'd be fighting um, like let's say a, a military aspect. You'd be also fighting other multi-online players and then you'd be fighting zombies at the same time, which the zombies would be computer whatever. So that would really jam up everything. Uh, I was I love that idea. It, uh, uh, Doomsday Kingdom game would be so badass, but it would take a while to do, man. Uh, someone says I don't think AMC has the balls. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. 
Wait, Doomsday Kingdom fan Q and A. What was the piece of work James did that said this was my artist? Question mark. What is that about? They're asking. You know, they asked how I got in touch with you. Um, and obviously, I showed you that book cover. That was like my oh, first, that was my first way of getting in your attention. Yeah, he did. He did like a, a mock up of a, like a volume cover, but I think the very, very, very normal. first thing was the prisoner being dragged on the back of the horse. I believe that was like the, the absolute first thing you sent over. Remember that little panel? It was yeah, a yeah. wide one. Yeah. Um, I like that a lot. And, the Facebook and then it was the, know. yeah, it was the, the other stuff too. That was so badass. Real quick, a lot of people are talking about a full nude Walker. Uh, I don't know if that has oh, been yeah. released. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, about the Walking Dead, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. Because <laughs> we were gonna do one for that, uh, the main one in issue one, but you had him have his jeans, like cover it. Yeah. Because we we talked about that as well. Like we almost did one. The thing with the. AMC and the full new Walker, it's probably going to be something like, you know, it, it's so rotten you can barely tell. And, <laughs> yeah. Not only that is, is what's the point? Has it gotten so bad now? That's what they're doing. Like, guys, tune in. We're going to have a naked zombie. You know, like, I don't care if they if they can get away with it. I think it adds realism to the world. You know, uh, I think it would be neat getting some some cool stuff like that. What I like is in the very beginning when shit is, you know, falling apart, you get the different new neat, you know, zombies. And that's kind of something that we're trying to do with Doomsday Kingdom is uh, the clown zombie is going to be one of our favorites because there's – in Doomsday Kingdom, there's stages. Like the guy James is drawn now. This is, I guess, officially for those who haven't figured it out – uh, this is essentially the very first stage um, to some of them uh, because not everyone uh, not everyone turns like this. Some people it kills you straight out uh, that you guys already saw and then you know some people get sick and lose their mind. Uh, but you know his heart's still beaten. he's not dead. he's not like a an official zombie zombie. But man, does it add some flavor to it. A lot of people try to, how do you do either fast zombie, slow zombie? And I was like, man, it'd be so nice to have a combination, you know? Because the original idea was having, with the stages, you got your fast zombie, so to speak. Because the people get infected and it's kind of like a rage thing. Like anyone seen the crazies? It's not like that because they're kind of, um, it's, yeah, it's not like 28 days later. Imagine a little bit of 28 days later with a little bit of the crazies. I guess that's a good way to put it. And a hint of, uh, the predator, um, um, um a little paying respects to the predator is mixed in there somewhere. I'll explain that after issue three is released, but, um, that's kind of what you get here. So you do have these fast threats, but what, what this morphs into, what this, version of a zombie stage one zombie what this morphs into we're gonna see later with the clown and i tell you what that is probably one of the most i'm absolutely excited about because what, what i was thinking as far as writing it is how do we refresh the genre so not only with stage one you have a zombie that is more threatening and faster but we get to a point after this with how they hunt I think people are just going to love it. At least I hope they love it because I'm a massive zombie fan and I know it's riding that borderline uh, where you don't want to go over the top. Like he's not going to pump gas. You know, this isn't – what was that? Land of day, the Dead. Day. Land of the Dead, yeah. yeah. He ain't pumping gas. He's not going to shoot a gun. Guns. Yeah, they can't use tools. Uh, it's very instinctive. I looked at a lot of um, uh, different shit with animals and plants and bacteria and uh, – parasites parasites especially they have these very in intelligent things that they do that's just crazy when you look up parasites and they're they're these microscopic you know what i'm saying and the shit they do is nuts so yeah pulling from some of that oh wait a minute the chat is i didn't have the chat let me read some of this uh i figured i'd run my mouth 
a little bit, let you get some drawn to... <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about saying, like, if we get a time later on in, like, an, on another day, obviously when mm -hmm. you've got time, then it will help uh, if you're reading the questions or whatever, if there's anything specific. Oh, yeah. Like, obviously, what I'll do, do that. on the next one is just do the painting for the six there so I can concentrate on the comic off stream, uh, which obviously what I do most of the time anyway. Mm-hmm. I just thought it'd be cool, just because some people were interested in the whole process and didn't realize how much shit actually goes into this. Yeah. Um, real quick though, uh, HQ Vision Production says sounds like Save the World Fortnite. Uh, it's not even close. Not even close. Save the World Fortnite. All you do is set traps and shoot zombies, and you stay in one spot. Like that's it. I don't know if you ever played Save the World, but not at all. Like I'm talking about um, having this first person world where. You have zombies. They have zombies. Uh, they have the weird cartoonish looking ones, which I do like. Some designs, I think it's fun in a cartoony way. Um, but this, like you're actually achieving goals and moving all throughout a city. Uh, and there is a story to it, like a campaign, or you can play a multiplayer because that's obviously the two biggest things, campaign and multiplayer, you know, that everyone wants. James, you just had a draw. It's been great. Trying to sneeze then, and I was reaching for the mute button, and then the sneeze went. Yeah. <laughs> now I really feel um, like I need to. I need to sneeze again. <laughs> Brother Art Art Arteris says, "Would the game be co-op? If we could, I would never turn my back on a on a story mode on a campaign ever, uh, and it would absolutely be multiplayer in this day and age. Fans like almost demand that, but I would never." allow that without having a campaign down the line you know what i'm saying so yeah. i'd like to get both mm. yeah, we're not ea <laughs> they just they've given up on single players now mm -hmm. Sounds, yeah i don't want to give up on s single players i love single players man um it just opens the door now for a lot more independent uh, good games to be yeah. making Uh, what do I like and dislike about Save the World? Uh, I bought it for my daughter, and I kind of wanted to get better at um, Battle Royale, uh, getting used to the controller. But Save the World, they don't let you use the same controls as Battle Royale. It is the dumbest thing I've ever seen a company do. It's like, here, here's the same, you know, same game, essentially. We have two different versions of it. <laughs> One you can play with other people online, and one you can play with other people online, but you're fighting against zombies, and uh, it's different controls. Why would you do that? It's so dumb. Anyway, <laughs> Save the World, uh, uh, it bored the hell out of me. I played it a couple times, but I'm bored. I probably won't play it anytime soon. Um, definitely need Vision, Zoom by the way, is Eddie. Oh, yeah. I, uh, we played, you played a couple times. I think... Eddie played with Juliet a few times. She is bored of that, too. She likes Battle Royale. Um, All right, he's looking like he's leaping in the air. Yeah, hell yeah. Doomsday Kingdom fan, fan community said, which character on that promo piece... James Maid, are you looking forward uh, to introducing the most? Which promo piece is he talking about? Is Maybe it on page um... one from issue two? Oh, okay, on that one. Or uh, oh, oh my god, I shown, like crow. I can't. Yeah, I can't wait to get into uh, um, the rider. To be honest, uh, I think there's going to be one thing, especially, or people are just going to be like, "What the fuck." Um, I don't know, cause it's it's. Sorry. It, oh, I was just gonna say it's such a it's such cause you you expect something, you know, you expect uh, a normal story to play out, and I don't I don't want to get into it, but you it's it's such a like a reverse of your expectations. I just I can't wait to get to that, and it's such a simple thing, but I I think it's such an awesome thing. So the writer and then Crow's another one of my favorites, but. Uh, the clown piece, I can't wait to get to that one. He, also, that's going to be a fun one. That's going to be a creepy one. At least I hope so. I want to make that one very atmospheric. 
could a zombie wait uh, could a zombie in the first stage hold items? Um, no, I mean he could. He could. It, he can. They can move. They can grip. They can grab. Uh, it's not going to have intelligence to grab a rock and beat you with it, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they will use certain things. Um, yeah. Let me just say yes. It, it, you'll see it play out. It's not like that, though. It's not like they're pumping gas. It's not like this and this and this. But they will, uh, they will grab things, they will hold things, use things. Um, but you'll understand when it plays out, and then we'll break down uh, the idea behind it, you know. Um, but that's a tricky one because I want to say yes to make it easy, but I don't want people thinking they can use guns and shit. That's not. Uh, it's all. It's real primitive. Put it that way. The Walking Dead had changed their zombies so much. In the first season, they climbed. Yeah, I break. I base. I can't speak today. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I um, That's just uh, the showrunners, to be honest. That's all that is. Mm. Yeah, the uh, transformation from Stickman <laughs> to what we've got here. Like those, like People always say this when they're trying to learn how to draw or whatever, or they don't want to draw because they say they can only draw a Stickman. And what you'll find most artists saying is that if you can draw a stick man, you can draw anything. Because all I did was do a stick man first, which is simplifying the skeleton structure. And then I've just drawn shit on top that makes it look like a person. Obviously it's more detailed than that, knowing what you're drawing, but to show you, Ronnie, what I showed them before mm. was literally like if you can draw a stick man, you can pretty much draw anything. So it's just a case of, you know, what is an arm? It's, a, it's going to be a straight line. Then you're going to have a dot, which will be the connecting point for the elbow. And then the forearm is another straight line. Then you've got the palm, which its basic shape is a pentagon. And then with a triangle on it, which gives you the thumb section of the hand. Uh, then you've got shoulder blade to the forearm. Then the neck muscle, which is this is the only extra addition that you need to put in when doing a stick man, is the neck, the clavicle, like the part where your neck muscle leads in on the front of your chest. Do another dot for the other side. And then if this arm's going in the distance, then obviously the arm will be shorter or longer if it's coming closer to the camera or further away. So in this case the arm's smaller and the hand's smaller than the the other one because it's in the distance. Then the uh, chest portion is just another big straight connecting line, which is generally the middle as well. So like wherever I put this line could be the new middle. Uh, the pelvis, you can just simplify it as Superman's underwear, which is a funny way of looking at it. Two dots to connect the leg to the underwear. And then what are the legs? It's the same as the arms, it's just another couple of lines and then boom you've got oh god I'm on the wrong layer but you've got a stick man there's his fucking head <laughs> see that <laughs> <laughs> essentially that's that yeah no delay I assume but yeah, yeah I, I love how, yeah so, I love how that comes together when you get the uh, the raw work and then you get to see it come into life. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying on the stream as well, like sometimes you never really tell me that you like it unless you've seen like the very finished thing. I'm just like mm -hmm. going through my whole life. Like, does he even fucking like this piece of picture? I'm just <laughs> spent ages on or what? <laughs> like, obviously when we see it all lettered as well, that's when I'm just like, holy shit, we've just made a comic book. Like that still yeah. blows my, that blows my mind because obviously the time it takes to draw it and then waiting for it to be finalized. When I look at it, it's like seeing it for the first time, especially when it's completed. And I'm just like, who the hell drew this? Like, I'm just <laughs> enjoying the comic as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and speaking of the comic, there was, um, I know we said a while ago we were going to throw uh, the last of the day and night variants. And there's been such a long delay on that because the, the, um, the last like 10 
were uh, printed and cut crooked. So I had to contact them, and, and they didn't e they didn't answer me back for the longest. I think it was like two weeks. And then I, in the mail yesterday, I just get a, a pack with my replacement issues. Um, yeah, the printer's been real great, but that was the only misstep where it was like and they didn't say anything, but they they fixed it and then shipped replacement issues right back out. So. It's kind of one of those things, but it, I don't know if I have the, yo, know, I might have one of the messed up copies sitting right here. Um, let me see if this is, um, we're going to sell it as a rare, uh, yeah, see how, uh, oh man, <laughs> this is going to be rough to see, but um, you can see the edge of the page here and you can kind of see how, yeah, they're not going to be able to see it. But you can kind of see how the panel so close to the top. Well, it's actually cutting the panel off. And because it's cutting the panel off, it's actually cutting uh, this all this space down here. It's actually cutting the panel off. And it does that on a few pages. And here's another one you can tell where it was cut wrong. So it's actually cutting into the artwork. And then the bottom is all Just, crooked. It's all white. Fucking hell. Yeah. Uh, so, and it's only, it was only cause I skimmed through, um, all of them when we get here, when they get here and then each one, as I'm signing them, we do a little skim through and then bag and board. And cause it's real easy to check when you got a whole stack, it's real easy to check, make sure everything's on up and up. Well, I noticed this one had a little burr in it and I've worked in a sheet metal shop. So I know when, uh, when you get a burr in any type of, I did sheet metal, but same thing with paper. Uh, there's a potential for the material to slip, and when it slips, it could be off on its cuts. That's actually how I got that huge scar right here. Yeah. Piece of sheet metal, um, the it, the die wasn't sharp enough, and it created a burr in it, and uh, it just got hung up in the sheet, and it came at me, man. It attacked me like I punched its mother, you know? <laughs> it shit was vicious. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, they sent in replacements, so now, because, yeah, I don't know, so now... We have some crooked signed copies. What do you guys think? Do you think we should hang on to these? <laughs> <Jim was divine. laughs> There's people that love that shit, and then I feel like such a douchebag. Like, here, let me sell you this crooked ass signed copy. But there's legit people out there who love that shit. Like, I love, I love defects. I'm one of those people. I got, I feel, I got a defected 109 of The Walking Dead. It's one of my favorite comics in my collection because it's like one of a kind. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I'm like one of those weirdos. Okay. I'm going to draw some sexy furniture. Nice. Now, when you're doing the coloring and – well, obviously, when you're doing the drawing and coloring, uh, do you imagine it? Do you picture it going from issue one to two and three? Well, the coloring. No, just the, the story and the flow and the images – uh, because I know when I initially wrote uh, one, one, two, and three, the uh, the polished because the story is already done for a lot, lot of them. But when I wrote them down, uh, polished for a script, I know I didn't even look at uh, or pay attention to the story going in from one to two, and it was real yeah. sharp. I had like I had like that abrupt end. Remember, I told you I said. You know what? If if you're reading this in, in a volume instead of issue to issue, uh, I want it to have that transition page. Uh, you might not understand it at first. You might flip over and be like, "Oh, this is more like a poster than anything else." But then down the line, you'll start to get piece by piece, and you'll be like, "Oh my God, I get it now!" You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just comes down to the script, really. Yeah. Like, I don't, like obviously, I can see it as I've once I've read the final script and so it's easier to tailor the drawings to it but it's not like mm -hmm. I have to draw a page and then hope the next page is going to make sense because you're going to write it to make sense yeah so maybe the uh, coloring would probably be the only time you really focus on that for the continuity yeah, the I would do as a whole because like when I did like I can show it when I did the first issue um, I had to see decide on obviously what kind of color palette I wanted to use but you are like me where we don't like a, a so extreme like if something had like red light the, in a normal comic like the whole image would be like super red 
Like, yeah. I'm not a fan of that. Like, I like to show some of the actual colour. Oh, you know, yeah. You always Same get some here. people who ask, what colour is this thing, or what colour is that? Um, so, obviously, I try and, like, keep a balance, but I'm just trying to find the actual colour reference. Because I sent you it, it was, like, a load of... It was a thumbnail of all the pages with a colour square over the top of it. So, like, the first page was yellow because of the yellow light in the interrogation room. And then outside it's a stormy weather so i did like a, a cool blue tone um to show that it's quite dark and then as the image as the issue goes on with the clouds separating to let the blue sky shine through that's when things start to color normal and then mm-hmm. with the sunset obviously that's orange um, and so to make it transition into the final page which is also a yellowish heavy page because of that interrogation room light the sunset had an effect on the colors because it made everything a lot more warmer so that it's not a sharp contrast between outside and the back so it just looks nice like if you're looking at it from a color perspective the first page is yellow toned then it goes to blue then it goes to orange then it goes back to yellow and that gives you you know a complete circle of the color theory or whatever I just can't find the image that represents that. DCP Morgan said, will you do a Walking Dead tribute cover for Doomsday Kingdom? I think it would be, I think it would be neat. It'd be kind of cool to do something like that. Uh, I'm not really sure. It it all depends on, um, uh, I don't know the do's and don'ts of that. I'll be honest with you. I think, would we sell one officially? I don't think we would unless we had, uh, Skybound's like blessing to be honest like if they said oh it's cool do an issue one tribute where we have the rider you know standing kind of like Rick Grimes did with the the look of it uh, if we had their blessing I think it'd be awesome to do an official one but I don't think we'll, uh, yeah James what do you think on the yeah, um, no, like what's the, the do's and don'ts of that I'm, I would probably wait for like, yeah, a, like an official blessing on that with the variant covers, obviously, with Image, all the different comics are under the Image banner, so it's a lot easier for them yeah. to say, let's do a homage. Um, I mean, there's other comics that people will do it. I just don't feel the need to do it, especially this mm-hmm. early on. Like, we want to show ourselves being different. Um, yeah. Like, it's cool to acknowledge that The Walking Dead exists, but it's not the whole reason why we want to exist, because we want to do our own shit. And I just don't want to really draw that issue one cover because it's been done so many times like it I has like, been. I like, I like the image, but it's like yeah come on, like do we really need to do it as well like we could pick a different cover obviously. oh all, absolutely like we like we've done walking dead hum- i've done walking dead homages like with the well you did it with the screwdriver zombie that's pretty much a reference to yeah. season two i did it with the the crawling zombie on the issue two cover because of like the bicycle yeah. and stuff like Small things like that is fine. Like anyone can do uh, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, see that I love because we have a tribute to the Predator in the. You know, we had a tribute to Stranger Things. Like I love taking little Easter eggs, and I don't like doing it where it's obvious. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like doing it where uh, it's a lot more subtle, and then people get it later on. Are like, oh, okay, I get what he did there. Yeah, because there's Easter eggs in the second issue that I've been hoping yeah. someone fucking figures out, and only one person has actually got it all right <laughs> and it's not john john i've been trying to get trying to make it clear yeah. of like what is an easter egg and oh my god that took ages yeah <laughs> and even then he's still not yeah. like figured everything out yet no there's a couple i i think there's um there's a couple hidden in issue number one especially towards the end the, and i get it too if you skim through some of what's said you might you might just like I don't know, brush it off as something, something, but there's um, hints to some really big stuff, like the direction where the story's going to go. And uh, especially when it, it starts talking about, like, if you knew what I knew, da da da, like that type of stuff, uh, there's some real yeah. big stuff there. I couldn't go into it because then it wouldn't be a surprise later on. But uh, yeah, especially in issue two, I love dropping a lot of uh, uh, little hints and stuff. Uh, what was it? I know some people didn't like the, um, I think it was the grammar on the radio announcements. And I, I just want to say, that's a real radio announcement, word for word. Uh, the Cuba one, 
I copied that word for word of a radio announcement. You could look it up on Google. It came out like, uh, I don't know. And I, we added it last minute because I loved the way it sounded. It was like some type of outbreak in Cuba. Uh, Americans are asked to leave the embassy because people are getting violent. Like, I shit you not. It, was, it sounded just like a zombie outbreak. And it was a real article, like no bullshit. So I copied it word for word as kind of like a um, like paying homage to that being on the news nowadays. And it already fit in the story because I was going to have a radio announcement there. And I was like, oh, I'll just use that. And some people were like, oh, I didn't like how that was worded. Yeah, I'm like, it was, the, it was real. <laughs> the uh, Again, of all the headlines that people picked an issue with was that man gets 52 years in prison. That was the only headline that I just pulled from online because it kind of gave you a sense of like, is it talking about what's happening in our world? But it, yeah, it's not really like it's just a case of some sick guy. But as a zombie comic reader, you'd be like, oh, I wonder if he's talking about he, he killed a zombie, but he got punished um, because obviously the, not everyone knows that zombies are happening or whatever. Um, but obviously, it's not. It's nothing really to do with the story. It was just an extra one to fill that space up at the bottom yeah. of the frame and people had issue with that one I'm just like come on it's just a fucking headline again it's like it was saying oh like how did you get a quick how did you get a sentence that quick well it's like well it's a it's a brief headline it's not going to tell you oh story. I see what you mean I see what, yeah that's the thing with headlines is uh, everyone in that area pretty much already knows so when they go national it will say uh, they're not going to say like you know Tim Steve John they're going to say you know husband kills his wife and gets sentenced how many years for it i get what you mean there yeah, yeah. uh doomsday F kingdom fan community said i don't know what this means though not sure if saw maggie but would zombies be more comparable uh to that than the walking dead i'm not sure what you mean there but i think i think there's like two words that are a typo there and i think that's what's messing me up let me know what you mean and put that back down below I oh, uh, questions. Paige Leslie asked, how long is the process of making one issue? You want to take it from the uh, art side? <laughs> yeah, well, that's I told probably... him that the average page is roughly 12 to 16 hours. Some pages can be done quicker if it's just like headshots, which helps because the next page, if there's, like I say, the more perspective things that you've got to put in it, the longer it takes because you you do a wrong line and it screws up the entire image, and it's like, oh, for fuck's sake, I've got to like, tweak it and redraw it. And especially like if you recreate in real life, like the issue three cover, um, a lot of artists would just use the photograph and copy it, and like, just trace over it. Um, but I just recreated it. Um, so there's some things it's not, if you look at the pictures, it's not like a perfect comparison, but it's still the feeling of that general area. Um, but obviously issue wise, even if I had all the script, you know, it's still 12 hours on average to a page. And I only have like eight hours a night, eight hours a night after I work to do it. So, you know, you're looking at like a, a day and a half to do a page. And if there's 22 pages, and then if there's covers, which obviously I have to do, and then if there's extra images we want to do for prints, then it's like, that's going to delay it. So the average time, like if we get faster, um, doing the same amount of work that we do now but a little bit faster than it will be like two months for for an issue really but again i've got to color it so that's another job on top of everything else so that delays it even more so it's like another week on top of the two months it would take and then it's a case of us getting ready as we said before like when we know we're going to get a load of orders it's like we have to make sure that we just have that time set aside to focus on shipping orders we can't write images we can't write the script or we can't draw the comic because we just won't get anything done properly oh yeah with be, issue <laughs> yeah i was gonna say with issue one i actually took three weeks off of work and just i shipped the comic only that's it and i think i tried to keep up with a, a few videos when issue one came out there was a lull there for a couple of weeks that's what i was doing I, from when i woke up got julie at the school i went right to ship and orders i even said screw it and ran to staples and bought a stack of uh the printable labels because i just couldn't keep up 
Uh, it's just time consuming. I think that's the even when you're cutting corners, uh, not cutting corners, but even when you're you're learning the programs, the shipping software, and you're getting stuff to help you. Oh my God! Next thing you know, I got to go pick her up from school and then make dinner and then the bath, and it's like, geez, I only got you know 65 orders shipped today. Damn, I got 300 more to do. <laughs> you know. Exactly. Uh, here's um, Versina. Did I say that right? Versina said. Uh, if you do a live action comic a video of Doomsday Kingdom, will you use voice actors or is that too big of a risk? That wouldn't be a risk if uh, we hired the voice actors. That wouldn't be a risk at all because we would own, you know, we would own that. So that's not a problem. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be a risk at all. Um, SS the General said, Ronnie, if you was to get a Doomsday Kingdom game made, would you have it in the style of Red Dead Redemption that people could create their own rider for multiplayer? I, I haven't played Red Dead Redemption uh, multiplayer. I remember playing that a long time ago, and I liked it on like the PS2. Uh, but I would, um, I'd be up as long as you know the developers can handle it, and that's something the fan base would want. I'd look into that. Sure, I know the idea is we would have different skins and stuff because uh, you got to have something that is. Uh, sellable to help keep the servers up and running and all that so um, but yeah I mean sure spin spin 2020 with a ten dollar super chat thank you very much uh, she says thanks James and Ronnie this was a great idea seeing the process makes the story even more interesting love you both hope Juliet feels better soon she's playing a video game she sounds like she's feeling a lot better video she's <laughs> she still is a yeah she still is a nasty cough though and she sounds like crap but uh, thank you very much, Spin Spin. I appreciate the support. Oh, James, I'm sorry. Doomsday Kingdom said, uh, fan community said, Maggie is the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, and there are stages of zombies. Um, all right, now maybe i got to read your question again, but I That's think I know what you mean. <laughs> okay, not sure if you saw Maggie, but would uh, zombies be more comparable to that than The Walking Dead? Oh, Maggie mm. the film. Yeah, the, the movie. Yeah. I thought he meant Maggie from The Walking Dead. The stage I one, had kind of, but not really. Yeah, yeah, not not at all. Very, not like, at all. Because in Maggie, the, she was a lot more. Advanced. They're aware. Like, she still had like a, yeah, she still had like all the mind functions. Yeah, they're aware, and that's like uh, I don't know if I have my binder here. I have a sticker on my binder that says "Dead Inside," and that was one of the I had a top. 10 titles for doomsday kingdom before and dead inside was like the top three that was i think i heard you say that before yeah that was almost officially what it was going to be like that was in the top three so doomsday kingdom almost was dead inside and the only reason i pulled it is because the walking dead made that too damn popular with its don't open dead inside I said, there's no way. There's no way. You can't do that because then they're going to be like, oh, it's even more like The Walking Dead. And the the other one, I think the top three, Doomsday Kingdom, Dead Inside, uh, after Doomsday, I think was up there, and uh, Us and the Dead. And that was from season one, Rick says, uh, oh, there, uh, there's only Us and the Dead and anyone who gets in the way of me reaching my family, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But uh, I always, I always like that. I always want to use that in a chapter maybe. But there, I tell you what, with the Maggie movie, there is a scene that you can say is um, kind of pays respects somewhat to something from it that's similar, but it is so small and it's nothing like that. Like uh, the the stage one, like you're dead inside, hence the title. <clears throat> it's it's over, and that was even a part of uh, the conversation and what you find out. Like that guy right there, there's no hope for him. In Maggie, I think you're still like aware. Like this guy right here, he's he's done. Even though he's not like an official zombie yet, it's he'll never be the same. He's done. <laughs> Especially after eating his wife, I don't think there's any coming back from that. <laughs> Is this guy or actual whoever. neighbor? Yeah, that's an actual neighbor. So who's the person he killed? Is that the wife then? Well, I guess we'll find out. I don't I don't know if we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that it's you not see, a, you it's see not an a, issue too. Yeah. Like he's obviously yeah. someone. It's not a biggie. Was. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Wife, or, did you draw it? A, you draw it a girl, right? If yeah. if it's not, it's his boyfriend. Either or. <laughs> yeah, okay. Maggie is. Uh, how long have you been painting? 
from Sh Shahar. Oh, I'm missing these questions. Oh, there's another super chat from Pat. Uh, there we go. Has anything been released of Overkill's Walking Dead yet? Or is it just still that cutscene? Just that, just that scene. I the wish, mini I trailer. I wish game companies, when they release something for the first time, they just actually show the game now because people have been sick oh, I... of CG trailers since 2012. Yeah, when I like hate it. Fucking lied about showing how awesome their game was, and then it turned out to be <laughs> rendered CG like a year later. And Listen, like, since... I'll make this promise right now: if we grow big enough to make a game. For Doomsday Kingdom, I guarantee we're showing gameplay. We're not doing a CG. We'll give you a CGI like, oh, look, because it shows off the engine, and we'll do that. Yeah, yeah, of course. But at the end, we're gonna be like, here's what it looks like to actually play it. You know? Because that's what just people say all the time in the comments. Is like, I want to, because I don't, I want to know what the fucking game is. Is it gonna be like first person, um, Dead Island? Uh, what's the other zombie game that I've got that you had? Dying Light? Dying Light. Or is it going to be third person like Last of Us or what? Like... From from what they said, it's like a uh, first person. So it's like a Walking Dead Call of Duty. That's the way they're kind of marketing it, you know? Oh, and the, they yeah, they did have a scene in the, the background on a laptop and you can kind of see the one of the devs playing it and it Look just like um, Call of Duty, to be honest, uh, but like Walking Dead style. So, okay, uh, painting wise, in drawing in general, I've been doing it for six years. I just found out, which doesn't really show my artwork, <laughs> but it's definitely better than the first pictures I was drawing. <laughs> but saying that, I do think I've improved a lot just from doing the comic because again, it's all about discipline. I didn't have time to so just randomly draw like every single day. And now with a comic, like I like it when I've got a lot of scripts that I can just draw straight away. Because like having a long break just makes me forget some things, especially when I've got to do coloring as well. I have to then like think about how to color something properly. And then by the time I get to draw in the next issue, I'm just like, oh wait, how the hell does a fucking what does a head look like? <laughs> you know, I've got a head myself. But yeah, yeah, that's on understandable. And off, on and off six years, but seriously like two years yeah even doing the lettering there's parts of the program and shortcuts and stuff that i forget and then when i go back to do it again for issue two i'm like oh my god that's that shortcut that makes it a lot easier yeah um real quick i want to take this question from create till death they asked uh you said you have a detailed outline of a story that you've been developing for two years Lately, you've been thinking of actually writing it, but what do you decide? How do you decide the best format, novel, movie, comic, etc.? This is so incredibly easy to answer. You're going to kick yourself after. Uh, with a movie, you're never going to be able to do it unless you are a, a multimillionaire or you have the connections or you're famous. If you're not any of those, the best you can hope for is to write a script and sell it. Uh, now it might never get made, but that's not the point. You, you know, you're gonna sell it. Once you sell it, a lot of people think that you're hands on. You're gone. They're gonna give one of their buddies or someone they owe a favor to. They will write it and get the credit. You'll probably just get like fifty thousand dollars or or maybe a lot less. Uh, so if you're fine with that, then write a movie. If you want to, um, if you can draw really well and you can do everything, then do a comic. If you can't, you're obviously gonna have to find help. You get what I'm saying? So I would say do a novel. It's the only thing – like if you can't draw and you are you don't have the connections to make an actual movie, uh, the best thing to do – and you, you want to own the rights to the story because, again, with a movie, they're buying the rights out from under you. You're not going to have any you know franchise rights or anything like that. Uh, they'll buy it all out. So I would say do a novel, absolutely, if you want to keep it yours. If you want to write a cool movie and try to sell it, go for it you know but write something you're willing to part with because most likely they somebody even if like it's the most amazing thing in the world they'll be like here's you know thirty forty thousand dollars and they might put it on a shelf and never make it for 10 years you know yeah that's the same thing i saw a video recently <clears throat> um, you've seen america's got talent mm -hmm. that obviously that started off in england 
Um, but some UK guy, through a friend, um, managed to get a hold of what the contract is that everyone who wants to be on the TV, even if you're yeah. just doing an audition, like it details everything that you have to give up. And it's essentially everything. Like I'm not even kidding. Like you can't even post on social media. This is even if you've not even been on the TV. Yeah. But you've signed this contract saying that if you do get to the stage where you're on TV, they own everything. So the people, this is why you don't like see them doing like their own things outside of their appearances on the thingy, unless they've got written permission, which most of them don't because most of them never come onto the show. You never hear of them again, even if they had like one audition. And it's stuff like you can't tweet, you can't do social media. Anything that is online before the point of signing the contract, after you've signed the contract, that they own it. So they can say, oh, this video needs to come down off your YouTube or so and so. So like you're literally selling more than just your soul just mm-hmm. to have a shot of getting on the actual TV show. And it's the same thing with like films, like because they can then market you however you want. And if you have any like side projects you want to do, like in the case of this, like if you're making obviously a film, whatever, like you just said, like they can just hold it. And it's the same thing with this entertainment contract for just being a singer on a talent show is insane. So it's like, if unless you don't really care about the project and you just want the money, then yeah, do it. But obviously you're selling your integrity for these major contracts. Oh, yeah. That... Uh, Pat Sanzone with a five dollar super chat. Thank you very much, bud. He says you two are. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, he says we're both cool. I think. Hold on, hold on. I screwed my thing up. Hold on, it's jumped all the way down. Okay, sorry, sorry, Pat. Uh, Sanzone, you two are awesome. Thanks for the stream. It's been great. Thank you very much for the support. Actually, really glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm gonna get going soon. I. I Forgot I got a kid to take care of. <laughs> oh, jeez. I ah, forgot. forgot. Um, let me see. Okay. what uh, Walter White says, what TV shows have you taken inspiration from, and not including The Walking Dead? Oh, this is kind of difficult. Um, no, I would say none. I don't, I don't know how to answer this, really, because like when I see something, a good movie or a good um, uh, TV show, like – I, I enjoy it and it makes me more excited or inspires me as far as it, it makes me really want to create, you know what I mean? But I don't see it breaking bad or these other shows and go, okay, I want I want something similar to that in you know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's yeah. a weird thing where uh, it gets me hyped to create, but it doesn't inspire me in that way, if you know what I mean. But anything good, anything that's good and interesting is inspiration for me creatively. Thanks for seeing us. Have a good night. Oh, <laughs> SS the General says, uh, uh, would you do a Doomsday Kingdom crossover with the Walking Dead comic as a one-off issue that's not canon to either story? Uh, if it was a joke, uh, you know, let's say Doomsday Kingdom was rocking it and the Walking Dead is rocking it and they, they wanted to do like a free comic book day crossover if we're two independents. I, I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? As long as it's not canon and it is a goof, I don't care. I mean, that would sound fun. As long as it it, it wasn't something silly and stupid. It would still got to be kind of cool. But I don't know, um, honestly, what could be done. Uh, and I'm not really sure, you know. Maybe if the Dooms, maybe if the Walking Dead was still new in the first yeah, year and we were in the first year, I think you'd have a lot more room to do some type of crossover. But, um I don't know. I feel like The Walking Dead is in a totally different place now. Uh, well, maybe you could do something. The size tablet I use create is 12 inches. It's a Wacom Cintiq 12WX. It's a really old screen tablet, which just means I can draw on it and see what I'm drawing instead of the cheaper ones where it's just a black surface and you have to look at a different monitor. So this is more like drawing on paper because I'm directly drawing and affecting what I'm drawing. How do you go about selling a script? I don't know. Uh, listen, selling a script is uh, 
incredibly easy and difficult all at the same time. If you don't have any connections or if you if you don't move out to Hollywood and you're not you know rubbing shoulders and networking or whatever, uh, you're simply not going to. Now, when I say easy, there's other things you can do. You can enter into a screenwriting competition. Uh, Script of Palooza is one. Just look up some that are reputable, and you gotta have like an amazing script, though. You know what I mean? It's gotta outshine everything else by far. Which I'll tell you right now, it's not too hard. And I'll I'll be an asshole and say this, but there's a lot of terrible writers out there. And they're putting their stuff into Scriptapalooza and other screenplay competitions. And these judges are reading the worst of the worst scripts. So if you just have like a good, you know, story and you wrote it good and there's no errors and there's no, um, you know, uh, you don't have any typos and yada, 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 uh, they'll appreciate it a lot as long as it is good, you know. So I would say your best bet is look into something like that and look into um, – Anything that's up and coming that's looking for new material and anything that's accepting submissions. But I'll tell you right now, it is incredibly difficult uh, unless you are, especially from what I hear, in the scene or in L.A., you know what I mean, or in California in general. But, yeah, script isn't something where you have a good script and then you just send out letters, you know. I think there's some people, especially back in the day, that used to work and you, could, you might even still do that every now and then. But it's it's just, uh, I don't know, you, you got to have, if you have that it script, it gets a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Mm. It ended in two minutes. Oh, here, Mark Scott asked, uh, how do you decide how many accessories to put on a creep like rings, necklaces, watches, earrings, nose rings, lanyards, etc.? From an art perspective, it just depends on how much of them you can see. Like, this is a full body shot, pretty much. So, like, if we wanted, we could show it. But if if it's a... The smaller the person is in a panel, the less detail you can put. So you can't really show it off. So, like, some characters who are, are only in it for like one panel it doesn't really matter if they've got rings on because you're not going to see it but unless ronnie wants something specific then of course then it's going to be in there and you'll pretty much see it when it's a zoomed in panel if that answers the question <laughs> i don't know yeah i think uh, i think a, a lot also has to do with uh how that relates to the character i mean that's a good way to put it like if you have a character with certain things obviously it's going to have that on it um but if it's not like an important part in the story and you know i mean he could throw on some for uh um i mean what difference you know yeah like obviously i'll just you know just keep it basic like they're wearing a t-shirt or they're wearing a vest depends on obviously the weather as well if it was really cold, I'd dad, dad. people in coats. These stuff. people don't think you're my real dad. Talking to Mike. What? Oh, hello? <laughs> Are you my real daddy? Can't hear them, honey. Hold Wait, on, hold on. Just talking to Mike. Talking to freaking Mike. Hello? I can't hear anything. Is anyone to. Is it. What? That's my freaking dad. My name's Ronnie. Hello? Hi, Julia. Can you hear me? Go ahead, play. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get off soon. We're you gonna get your mic all backwards. Yeah. Tell them all. See, that's my dad. I don't know. I told that was. you. That's go. a weird one. <laughs> so I framed him, just in shadow, so it's. You were just focusing on the creep and not the background as much. And that's pretty much going to wrap this stream up, I think. I need to have a 15 minute chocolate break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta, it's, it's I gotta get her to I bed. Expected. It's quarter to two. We've been streaming for three hours Damn. and 55 minutes. As opposed Damn. to just a two hour stream. Well, it's, it's easier when there's someone else on there as well, so I can actually do some drawing. But this was good. Cool. This was a good test. At least we've had no problems. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it back and see, uh, you know, all the quality issues, see if there's any drops and everything else. But thanks, there's been 56 of you guys 
for the whole four hours, I think. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, was 56 like when I first looked, and it's still 56. So thanks, everyone, for coming out and uh, kicking it with James, especially, and then myself a little bit later on. And there's another super uh, chat by Mark as well. Oh, Mark, where you at, buddy? I didn't see that one. Wait, where is it at? Um, wait, what? all right. Yeah, the black oh, glove I got it just here. lets me slide across the monitor easily. It's an artist glove. It just covers two fingers. Is that on uh, when you're on a tablet? Yo, do you do the yeah, paper it just trick? Just slam. Where you uh, you put if you're writing on paper, you put a, a paper on your palm and yeah. slide that across. My brother, he used to draw a lot. He was actually really good. If he kept at it, he'd be really good. But he used to do uh, copy Todd McFarlane style a lot. So he got good with that type of style, yeah. uh, but uh, he used to do that. So he didn't smear the the uh, the art. He drew in pencil. I don't know. Um, uh, Angie, nowadays, it's too late. <laughs> We're just about to end. Yeah, yeah. Then, like, I, even now, like, it's just in case, like, if I spill ink on the actual paper, at least the yeah. the scrap paper might catch it, which has happened a, a couple of times. Which yeah. you, don't ever, you don't ever see. I just have to make an excuse and take another two hours redrawing something. <laughs> that's, why <I> like, <laughs> that's why I like digitals. So just like I have no no way of damaging the artwork. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's end this out with the last question. Uh, what's your favorite zombie movie of all time? Mine is the remake of Twenty Eight Days Later. No, no, no. Not really? No. I mean, Dawn of the Dead, <laughs> the remake. Oh, really? I'm gonna go with Train to Busan. I'm gonna go with that. You know, I think I I'm gonna go with, with that. No subtitles, and I still enjoyed it. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> but I don't. I don't know if I would get more out of it with subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I think I watched it with no subtitles, and I liked it a lot. I think I watched it both, to be honest. Yeah, but yeah that's my pick. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know how often we're going to do this, but it, it's definitely got to be at the at a minimum. We should at least try to do this once a month at a minimum. Yeah. Um, tweak it here and there. But I'm going to get rolling. I'll leave uh, the goodbye up to you, James. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming out. Really appreciate the support. And then, uh, James, you go sign it off. This is your thing. <laughs> All righty, then. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you, hopefully, I don't know, next week. If not, I'll post if I'm going to stream on my own YouTube or Facebook or whatever. So follow me oh. there and support the comic. And that's another thing too. James has his own YouTube channel. So depending on if he's going to post more, um, uh, follow that as subscribe to that as well. All depends what I can show on camera. <laughs> <laughs> all right, people. Thank you all. And good night. All right. Good night, James. Good night, dude.